Thank you. It was Troy, myself, and um, okay. it was here. That's right. That's right. right. Sorry. Uh, is an All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna start. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the zoning world backfield for Town Wayham. Uh, today's it's Wednesday, September 14, 2022. It is 6 30 p.m., and we are at room 320 at the multi service center, 48 Marion Road, Wayham. Uh, we also have people on Zoom. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order. I make a roll call. My far left, associate member, Mr. Troy Larson. Our regular member, Mr. Rick Semple. Myself, the chair, Nazi al Our clerk to the right, Mr. Uh, Jim Akubachi. And Mrs. Devonese will be, she's in the pocket lot. She's coming up any minute. Going to have to click some preliminary business to do quick on the minutes. Uh, minutes for 527 2020 and 824 2022. If you want to do them together, I can uh, make a motion for both of them. I've reviewed both sets of minutes. They're both um, correct as presented. I move to accept them both. What do you guys think? I second it. Discussions? Yep. Any discussion? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose, abstain. 4 0 0. Continue public hearing. Uh, okay, for the record, Veronica, Mrs. Veronica de Benise is here, and it is 6.32 p.m. 23-22, John F. Keaton, special permit and a variance for 18 Highland Road. Come forward, please. Please go, Veronica. Three packets. Uh, so, and address counselor for the record. Uh, good evening, Mr. You. Mr. Chairman. Dennis Connery, uh, appearing in behalf of John Keating. My address is two. Is, my address is two forty five Main Street, Wareham. Okay. So what? Uh, what did we leave at last time? I went by. I'm sure other board members went by. Do you have new evidence on the hardship since last time? Well, yeah, well yes, I do, uh, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, I had a, the opportunity to, to draft a brief memorandum uh, that I filed with the with Sonia on Monday. I don't know whether any of the board members had a chance to to review it, uh, and. Uh, I did. I did quick today myself. I don't know about the board members. Where, where do you see the hardship in there? I I didn't well, know. I, I, the uh, the hardship issue is, quite frankly, most of the time that we we present variance petitions and applications. Yeah. The hardest the hardest issue is to is to is to get by the first condition, which is owing to circumstances specifically affecting this property and this building. But it, during the last hearing, Mr. Chairman, uh, you indicated that you thought that the the uh, petition established the first condition, which is that I think you referred to it as uniqueness. Uh, so it, uh, the stumbling block after that was uh, the, uh, the chairman questioned whether or not there was hardship. So it, as a result of, of your comments, I did some research uh, on the question as to what constitutes hardship. And uh, there's no definition in the zoning bylaw. There's no definition uh, in the statute 40A. So it, it, appears, it appears to me that the prevailing description that seems to be of, of hardship, which is one description would be as it relates to real property, an inability to use one's property in a reasonable manner. Now that's now separate. And if you don't have number one, you, you don't get to you don't get to the second condition, which is a hardship. And and I also then took the opportunity to review this board's decisions of the last couple of years on 
what you required for variances. And um, I, I, I uh, came across the uh, this board's decision in 45 Longwood Avenue in Onset, which was a 2021 decision. Uh, and in, in that case, there was a small cottage on a 3,700 square foot lot that somebody wanted to buy uh, and expand after they bought it. Before they, before they bought it, they came to this board and got uh, asked for permission to essentially triple the size of that dwelling, which is, uh, uh, it went from a 600 square foot, one story cottage uh, with an addition uh, of about 1300 square feet. So, and, and it had a number of, of uh, issues, but I only will focus on, on the hardship issue. Uh, and, and this is what the decision stated. The existing building is small and there is a financial hardship if an addition is not allowed in order to have a year round home. So it, it another case uh, that this board decided in, in that case, the board found that there was a hardship because because it was a small house uh, and the owner or the or the uh, intended owner wanted to triple the size of the lot uh, and a tiny little lot, thirty seven hundred square feet. So then I also then I looked at a couple other cases that this board decision. I'm trying to get a, 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 an understanding of what this board is, thinks is reasonable for hardship. And I looked at uh, 52 Nanimet Street, uh, and uh, that's a 5,000 square foot lot. Uh, and the owner of that property wanted to demol demolish a small structure and replace it with a, a garage. Uh, 24 by 28, 672 square feet. That once again, that's on a on a modest size lot. So in, in our case, we're not asking to build anything. Um, this is not a request to enlarge an existing lot, uh, structure. This is this is a substantial structure, however. Uh, it's it's been there for 60 or 70 years it's got a concrete foundation uh and uh concrete floor it's it's got a rel it's got a pretty new roof on it and it's eight, 800 square feet so it's it's not like most uh garages in town uh so it's sitting in the backyard it also is is connected to town sewer it has plumbing in it it has a a uh, bathroom and, a, and with a with a sink, uh, a toilet and a bathtub. And the, 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 the last in my last last time we had we had a hearing on this, we we described to the board how that how that plumbing got into the house and it wasn't put in uh, by the homeowner without a permit. He had a permit. He got it from the from the uh, the, the building inspector in 2002. At, at which time 400 square feet of the building was used for a toy, for a, uh, a recreation room that had, that had plumbing and it had electricity, it's got heat. So it's a substantial structure. Well, it's sitting in the back yard now and it's, it's, it's just collecting uh, stuff like uh, Sometimes people collect stuff in garages and it winds up that they can't get in the garage. Well, in any event, he wants to put it to a good use without changing the appearance of the building at all uh, on the outside. I mean, the size of it. Yes, he is going to. He's not a, he's not asking to take take down trees. He's not asking to raise it up in the air. So the, the neighbors will hardly notice it. It's there. And I don't know. I noticed we got a full house tonight. I, the, the last time we we had nobody here. I I hope everybody in the room isn't here to oppose my hearing, but or my my, my petition. But you never know. Uh, and uh, the last time my my client uh, checked, it was not objected to by anybody in the neighborhood. Uh, 
So my experience is that boards of appeals, they look at the whole picture. You know, is this is this going to be detrimental to the neighborhood is 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 the most practical thing. And I I, su I submit that it is not. It's going to be it. It's going to improve this property because he's going to he, he's looking to either have family live in it. He's got a couple adult children, but that's that's not a reason that would would that, that would support uh, a hardship. Uh, but the if and if this structure wasn't already on the property, I'd say that we had we would have no viable argument that we should be able to build this in the backyard. It's an existing structure. And interestingly, I came across a case. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, if I can put my hands on it, and it it happened the same year I came to Wareham, 1972, and it, it's Johnson versus the Board of Appeals, and it was an interesting case. Uh, what town? Excuse what town? me. Board of Appeal for what? Town? Of Wareham. Okay. <laughs> uh, and and it was about the property uh, just over the Narrows Bridge on Sandwich Road. Uh, that has been, it's it's across from where New England refrigeration used to be a long time ago, and now there's a barbershop there. Well, that property across the street, at the time I moved to town, was owned owned by uh, uh, the, 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 by the by the congregational church, and and there was a they wanted to, and it, it was in a it was in a residential zoning district. Uh, the, the church wasn't much of a church, but it it it, it was a unique structure, and the uh, the applicant wanted to turn it into office spaces, and this is in a residential district, so that would and that required a variance, and and I'd be happy to happy to share share the case uh, with, with the board. I've got I've got a couple, two or three copies. That's a, that's a bit different than this copies case. of it. That's a bit different than this matter. Well, I uh, and I, I think, you know, on, on a on a question of hardship, I, I guess the uh, in 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 that case, the let me if I may let me go back to these two cases you mentioned in answer. These cases they come in before us before us as a variance, unless the board sees it otherwise under thirteen fifty two, we'll act upon it as a special permit. If we if it's deemed not detrimental to the neighborhood, because most of these buildings are existing non-conforming, and our bylaw allows an extension of the non-conformity. So if you're set if you if you're set back ten feet and the house is at eight feet, our town allowed our bylaws. We can grant a special permit if the board feels it's not so detrimental and act upon it as a special permit versus a variance and extend that nonconformity. That being said, it, every case is different. Going back to you saying the variance doesn't exist in our bylaw, the ba variance bylaws are stately constitute, constituted on Mass General Laws 40A and it's section 10. And it's very, very clear on that section you want me to read it for you a quick i've attached it to 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 my to my memorandum right the, the and the, the statute 40a section right 10. and right. then it, the very important part that says a little a literal enforcement of the provision of the ordinance or bylaw would involve sub, substantial hardship financial otherwise to be the pet, uh, for the petitioner or appellant and that desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public neighborhood, nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent of the purpose of such ordinance. However, such permit granting uh, authority, uh, from the authority has to find that owing to circumstances related to soil condition, shape, Topography or such land or stu or structure, it's and especially affecting affecting such land or structure. So, your th th that doesn't none of this applies to your case. You just creating another dwelling. 
Well, you're talking about a use. We're not creating, we're not building a building. You're not creating building, but you are asking to create to create another dwelling and a garage. This is, there's no hardship to it. You look at the totality of the circumstances. This isn't a, 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 a 250 square foot garage. This is, this is a large structure, four times that size, that has plumbing, and 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 util and sewer to it, and I submit that that is a a a structure that's unique to this property. It's not. It it, it doesn't affect it. Like if you if you granted this 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 variance that that, that I'm with you, it's unique, but you don't have a hardship. We're not well. Well, in in the you have in, to fit the four conditions of the section ten. You don't have you don't meet all four conditions. So which. Well, the, the the hardship condition that you're concerned with, that 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 I haven't convinced you of yet, in the in the in the Johnson v. Board of Appeals of the Town of Wareham, there's a statement that says, not being able to reasonably use an unusual and substantial building is a hardship, justifying the issuance of a variance. That's so that the appeals court and the and the, and the SJC. Interpre 1972 case, right? Right. Right. That was a case saying it's not justifiable using a church in that location or whatever the case was to make a house or make make it a residential. I don't did they wanted to do it otherwise? Go from a church to an office. Right. From a church to an office. Instead of from a church to a house. Or church to an office. But that's in so 72. The court find that it's an assembly to an office i wasn't there so i don't know but that's a big difference you are you are creating another dwelling there's no hardship to create that dwelling the, well the key is that's an existing structure that i you, totally you, understand and and under 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 johnson it says if you're unable to use in a, a a unusual and substantial building is a hardship so they're they're, they're not agreeing with you in this case right, but you you can use it as a garage and a little shop when you work why, in a garage why do you why do you say hand? that this garage is not an unusual and substantial building town of wareham uh uh uh, so how does it make it substantial if you if it, you make it a dwelling versus a garage? Well, this was this was this was a church that they turned into a, a Johnson. They they took a church and it wasn't a, an august structure. I think it was a very modest modest building. Uh, that, but you know, we, we in order to interpret. The language and statutes, which is often difficult to interpret, uh, we we lean on the case law, and I submit that the language in this and every and I agree with you. Every the every one of these cases is different, you know. So you stand, you know what I, what what the what most boards that take try to do is look at look at this maybe instead of piece by piece, they look at it as 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 together is this good for is this good for the the neighborhood is this is is this good for the town i don't see how this it it it, it it's it's good for, it, it it accomplishes in a modest way the goals of the town right now which is to provide modest housing downtown close close to the village it's not going to have any sprawl i mean what what's the alternative is that this this building gets knocked down and, and taken to the to the dump uh, this is this is the ultimate recycling. You know, what's this? We're asking to repurpose this. Haven't we always gone uh, uh, repurposed buildings? You know, when, at the turn of the last century, there were carriage houses out there. What did uh, people no longer had ho horses, so they so they turned it into carriage house apartments. I mean, is is this is an, an outrageous? This isn't a, a over the top. What what this request is? We're just trying to 
repurpose this or, or the ultimate recycling to turn a building that's not being used to its fullest capacity in a very modest way, turn it into a dwelling house. But you are using the lot above your capacity, 200% above, because your law, your law only allows two units. You already have three. Well, if we, ha if we had enough, you know, you're, the density issue, the, this board- You would then need 21,000 square feet to have four ex units. Exactly. That, well, if we, if we had that, we wouldn't be taking up your time tonight. I mean, right, so, that's true. Well, so, so that, but well, that's you, how- You still need a special permit, not a variance. However, but you don't even have, you're not even close. If you were off by 50 feet, I understand. But before I make all my comments, let me, let me, if you don't mind, let, let me start by Veronica, Ms. Ms. Devonese. Do you have a comment on that? And did you have a chance to go look at it? I do. Um, I did look at it. I drove through the neighborhood and um, looking at the properties that were around it and seeing the number of cars that were parked at the property, I felt that another unit would really cause some congestion there. Um, but the, the other thing um, that I just am thinking about as I'm reading the letter here regarding the garage and, and that it's unique because it has a bathroom and a tub is that the reason for the bathroom and the tub is because he was denied the fourth unit that he had applied for in the past. So instead of getting the fourth unit, he put in a bathroom and a tub at his choice that it was a garage. And the stance that this is unique, it's not, it's the same situation, except now there was a bathroom and tub added because he wasn't allowed then. It's almost like you're saying, because there's a bathroom and a tub, it should be allowed to be a residential unit. The only reason the bathroom and tub are there is because I think someone was trying to work with him to get that to be what he kind of wanted it to be at the time. Um, I do agree that Wareham obviously needs the housing, but I, I feel like that property is has its maximum use as it is. And unfortunately, I don't agree. Um, Jimmy? No questions at this time. Troy? I don't have any questions at this time. Rich? So I went by it and... I'm I'm kind of we know that WV2 is a place where we're supposed to be housing and promoting that. Secondly, it's a garage that's on the property. It needs to something to do with it. If the gentleman wants to go through this, go come here and sit and try to get this apartment put in there. I, I kind of have to say that there was no objections. Um, and also I, I kind of feel like if a couple more cars in one part place, the next house down the road, if they want to do something, they're going to put more cars, the, the limit of the cars. I thought at one point I said, you know, maybe it is too crowded, but you know, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of for it. I, I, I'm, I am for it. I, I don't think that all the reasons that we're giving this gentleman not to give him a permit. I think there's, at the same token, there is reasons to give him the variance. So that's my thoughts on it. Thank you. Anyone on the public want to speak in favor? Troy, a chance. Yeah. Anyone on the, want to speak in favor or against? Okay, I hear none. What... Can, can I respond? Of course. One, yeah, yeah. one, one just question giving... that Veronica had. Uh, the, the, the site plan provides for parking on site for for this unit there's there's plenty of there's plenty of room to put a parking space off street this is a this is only going to be a a one bedroom uh apartment and th there may even be enough for 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 two spot parking spaces I, I, but uh for off street so it's but but the site plan uh provides for parking for this unit so uh the congestion on the street issue I really, I really don't think it uh, is there. That I did look at the parking plan because I, I wanted to see what it showed on the site plan because when I drove by, it, as I said, I, I thought it was congested. But I, I see the site, the plan here. Yeah. So I've heard three bedroom. I've heard three unit, four unit. 
How many kitchens are on the property right now? There's three. It's a it's a it's, it's an, an old fashioned three. Approved, with Jerry question is approved. There'll be four. Right. Okay. So there's four unique separate rental income properties. If this particular owner says it's all family, but if this particular owner sells it, the next owner can put whomever he wants in four separate units, however he wants. They're four distinct different units is what we'll, we'll be ended up with. <clears throat> yeah, there, correct? There's, it's a okay. just one old fashioned three story apartment house. It's been there for a hundred years and uh, it, 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 the layout is a flat. My, my recollection is during the first meeting, we discussed about it all being, they, they were all related or the, you well, he's got John. Yeah. John lives on the on the top floor. We had a little chuckle over it. He ought to be moving down uh, to to avoid the stairs. But he and his wife and and two two adult children, twenty and twenty one, uh, are 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 living in the house now. There, I think there are a couple of ones in college, and uh, yeah. uh, so uh, and he's been there since nineteen eighty six. It's not like he's he's he wants to move to town and 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 max out yeah i know the I, property i'm just wondering if there's some kind of a compromise position we can reach here where there was a deed restriction that would um even though it's going to still be four unique and separate independent units um it could be used more as a family compound than um portable housing you know, to use a not a very you know just wondering if there's some kind of a you know, if this board could find it in the board's graces to grant this fourth unit, is there somehow the applicant could assure the town that this isn't just going to become, you know, four units that are subsidized housing that sometimes don't get taken care of well? Well, uh, because this is a one bedroom. I think that that allay, that should allay a lot of, of of someone's fears about what's going to be done with this one eight hundred square foot unit. You can't get an army in. About the whole property now, I'm thinking about making it for a four family compound, a four unit compound, and re, and, re, and and restrict the, the the existing three units. I yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to reach. I'm trying to find something that would that would. Um, allow the applicant to have his cake and the board to eat it. <laughs> if I may, if I might interrupt, this would require a deed writer, completely different application going to 40 B. It will not work. And, and it's completely different application. We'll have to apply completely different on the 40 B. Well, no, I'm not talking 40 B. I'm talking about them voluntarily. Well, then it needs a, a deed, deed restriction on a deed restriction on deed, the property that deed it's either a family it compound or you know, it could be need. extended family. It could be. If you do it this way for affordable, it needs a, what you call a deed writer. No, 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 no. Deed I, writer, sorry. I, I wasn't trying to make it an affordable unit. I was trying to avoid it becoming that. I think uh, we've discussed it enough. I would like to close, unless you want to add something. That's my opinion, to close the public hearing. Would you like to add anything, Councilor? Let Before me just close. let me just see Let's see with my let me just check with my client if he's. Well, I I don't know exactly this deed restriction thing. Okay, well, he's not, we're not going. I'm not trying to go for. Yeah, yeah. No, we have nothing further. Okay. Nothing further, okay. So you make a motion to close, is, is, I'll second it. Okay, who's got a motion to close? You want the motion? I can't make it unless none of you makes okay, it. Okay, I'll move to close the um, close the public portion of this, this uh, application, this discussion. Okay, and uh, just for the record, Mr. Troy Larson will be voting for Mr. Morrison's seat. Okay, so we, do we have a second on closing public hearing? I second. Second by Rich. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any discussion? None. Okay. Now, what's the wishes? Close. Uh, one, two, three. 
I have a motion. Five zero zero. Um, well, I make a motion to approve the variance. Okay, we have yes. a motion by Mr. Rich Sample to grant the variance. Any discussion on that? Okay, do I have a second? I'll second it to force a vote. Second by Jim. Any discussion on the second? I hear none. So this is how we're going to do it. Uh, Veronica Debenese, are you yes or no? No. Jim Akabachi, yes or no? Abstain. Abstain. Troy Larson, yes or no? Yes. Richard Sample, yes or no? Yes. Myself, Nazi al Kalasi, it's a no. So it didn't pass. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, did you get that paper to sign? Uh, no, we're going to do the paper, the signing. You and I are going to go in and sign them. We're going to write it all up, and then we're going to sign them in the following. All right, let's uh, write notes in this. Uh, yep. Troy. Yeah. Rich, yes. Jim, abstain. Okay, what was your vote, Veronica? No. Veronica and Nazi, no. Okay. Very well. 26 22 Dos Amigos Realty LLC variance, 12 Large Street, map 38. Hey, stranger. <laughs> Hi. Just talking about her today. Did this get read into the record already? Continued. Please, this get read yeah, I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, Here's the deal. I, I can't say on. I have a conflict with those amigos. Can I have the folders from the last yep. hearing in before we? Open? So, uh, you want to call Amanda, or you want to wait for Jake? Oh, for that one, yeah. Um, I think I'd like to uh, to open it up to the board for discussion, but possibly continue for vote, depending. Was last time Jake here? Jake was here. Oh, okay. So good. Who could jump in under the Mullen rules next okay. time? Okay. Okay. So you guys, uh, Jim, <clears throat> with chair, and you guys. We'll go at it. The last one, unless you want to take it home. You can leave it in the file and not read it, or you can take it home and not read it. Anybody that has these um, memorandum from from uh, Tony? They were in our folder. I put it, I put it, I put it, yeah, I left it with mine. You know, I'm saying, okay. Oh, what are Yeah. Um, <coughs> two, two to one, okay. Yeah. Amigos? Yes. And we we are ready and and okay sorry, sorry. excellent. I just like to get everything. You know, I hate cross contaminating the fire. All right, I'll introduce myself, at Attorney Jillian Moore, in one eighty four Main Street. I represent Dos Amigos. So while you're looking in your packets, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on what we're looking for here. Um, so I represent um, a potential purchaser on um, this lot. Um, it's twelve Large Street. So I think it's helpful to pull out that plan and take a look at it so I can reference different items as I go along. Um, this parcel is part of the 1923 um, subdivision over there um, in Parkwood Beach. So each of those lots were um, approximately 0.1 acres. I think I included the older plan within your packet as well, as well as the um, assessor's page, because I know that was something that you wanted to take a look at. Um, our location is assessed at 0.19 um, acreage. The commissioner sent a letter back in June, a violation, two items that we're looking at. So we're looking at merger, the merger doctrine, um, and then we're looking at um, an undersized lot, so a variance from that. So it was important for me to kind of tell you the history of this parcel. Um, because those smaller lots, what happened is they merged. And in his letter, you can take a look at it. Um, it happened way back in the 80s. So there was a lot that was, um, um, we're looking at 512 and 513. So you see both of those lots merge into this one lot. 
12 Large Street. And there was a conveyance of a smaller lot that merged with one of these lots. So they're essentially saying you can't build on this, um, that it's merged. Um, my clients um, and the um, owners. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Can't of course. The two merged lots. So what happened is these lots are together, but there was a third. So if, the third lot that they were merged with. Yeah. So these are all point one. So actually, believe in his letter. If you take a look at it, it would be helpful. Okay. So it's um, lot five one three. So that. Um, merged it should have never been um it merged with the abutting lot when saying it, it should have never been peeled off of 513 yeah because they were owned in yeah all three were all, kind of merged all, all together right which i understand the, the purpose of the the merger doctrine as you know because we've had several in front of us but just to remind you is under 40a being able to make things more conforming essentially we want to we want if there is vacant land needs to be vacant land it will merge with the um parcel next to it under common common ownership so i had to review that back title to take a look at what happened here and this happened way before um the current owners were involved they purchased in 2006 this was a merger zoning issue back in 1980 so they're at a, a point here and i kind of keep talking about the clients I, again i'm going to interrupt you of course interrupt just trying to call. follow so they were all three one five one three peeled off five one four and five one five or Correct. part of five one four they merged five. under the merger doctrine and and they and they sold part of five one four and part of five one five right to an other party who never yes. built one and they're and they're this um, map thirty eight five one four and five uh, one five if you drove down there you saw that there, there's a house right there so that's a separate lot my lot is the one that's vacant that's and that's the merge of part of five one four and part of five and all of five one five right. Right. And right. that's never been built on there. So the assessor's page said there was a shed on it. Um, it's tax. It's, it's, it's never a residence. Yes, uh, never a residence. Um, and there was never a, a sewer drop brought into it. No, that's an, another piece of the puzzle. There is sewer and water flow for this parcel. Okay. So I've um, that was the first thing. Yeah, I just want to follow along so that yep. I don't jump in, it. jump in. It's kind of a complex one. So um, so, you know, when I take these cases on, I want to check to see if there is sewer because our moratorium, there is a sewer hookup there. There is flow for this new build. I've confirmed that with Mr. Campina um, several times to just double check. So they've allocated it was part of the master plan in this neighborhood. So they wouldn't need to be, um, you know, go in front of this board and then not have sewer hookup. The proposal um, is for a three bedroom Cape house. Um, Dos Amigos, if you're familiar, um, has built um, many different um, single family homes in Wareham and surrounding areas. Um, and this particular build will follow the nature of the other homes in the area. I actually did a assessment to try to figure out how, what is the average um, lot size in this neighborhood. So I took about 10, 20 properties um, and the average is 0.2 acres. Okay. And our lot is 0.18. So we're just under that. Um, so I would say, although it looks, when you look at the numbers, the minimum lot area in R30 is 300,000 square feet. If you look at the zoning table on the top of the plan, and we only have the 8,400, it looks like this huge gap. Um, but if we're looking at the actual neighborhood and what is over there, um, I would say that th this would be a lot because it has frontage as well on both streets, Larch and Hemlock, it's pretty unique um, to be able to add. We've already talked about housing here in Wareham um, to add a single family. The hardship is real for both parties, um, for Dos Amigos looking to um, build this and also the, the owners of the property. So the owners um, purchased this lot I don't think they knew back in 2006 about this merger issue. Um, they've been paying taxes on it um, and it is a corner lot over there. And if they don't get this variance, yep. They've been paying taxes on it. Correct. Do the tax records since they bought it reflect a buildable or a non-buildable lot? Have they been taxed on a should buildable be, or a non-buildable lot? Yep, so it should be in your packet. It doesn't say unbuildable. It just says accessory um, use. 
Okay. So there, I think it's exhibit C. I did put, try to put in the assessor's right. page. I keep interrupting you, but I just. That's okay. There's a lot of information. So yep. um, it's been taxed as this accessory structure for like a shed or a garage. It's been taxed as an accessory what? It's appraised for, it's appraised for $9,500. Correct. And so. And taxed on $9,500. Right. This being able to lot in Wayam is a current lot, a hundred thousand, hundred and fifty, depending on where you are, gone up quite a bit. Just, just so, here, yeah, okay. Yep. Just for the record. Um, okay. So yeah, so you can see in the previous years it's been taxed at a slower amount. So um there's absolutely hardship there for both parties. Like I said, if we don't get a, um approval and you've shown that okay this is a merger doctrine we have to live with it it's going to stay with a lot it's not going to be able to get added to the tax rolls as a you know build a four hundred thousand dollar house there for someone um so those are the issues in the case the merger and the lot size so i'd be interested to hear your opinions on um you know each of those issues and if there needs to be more explanation on either of those um i'm here to answer that I have a question. Of course. I'm trying to, I have a couple of questions. I was looking at the map and trying to figure out what, what lot is what. I can clearly see, I think, a 12. Let me find the page. I can see, I think that's a 12. But all of the other lots that are around that, I don't know what the numbers are. Uh, if I may, through the chair, so is it the smaller plan that you're looking at, the older 1920? The only oh, one okay. that is the... Yep. Right. Okay. So it is, um, it's kitty cornered on Larch Ave, and it's not label, but it's hemlock. So it's the corner uh, lot, and I have circled it on here if you want to um, see it. Yeah, right. Yeah, so it's on the assessors on the attached. You want to join me? I'll find you it. You got it? I'll just let me, I'll fumble through here. There it is. I got it. So I'm trying to figure out what these are. They have Those numbers. Are the but uh, what lot numbers? That's what I was trying oh, to figure okay. out. Um, so the one next to the bottom of your uh, plan, yeah. your, so, yep, that is um, the map 38, 514, it's five, one, 14 four. and 15. This is 14 and 15. Correct. Yep. And then to the left is 510 and 511. This is 10 and 11 here. Yeah. And then 12 is by itself. Is 12 is with this lot. 12 and 13 is, so it's, it's interesting because the title calls it a certain lots, but it's 512 and 513 are the lots that um, make up 12 large. 12 and 13. Yep. Okay. And and so then, okay. So that helps yep. me understand what this letter is that says 513 should not have been separated. Correct. In you know, whatever year, 1980. Yeah. Um, to be sold. I'm still to great. Alice. Do you mind coming I'll, up yep. here one yep. more time? Oh. We got 13, 14, 15. It's right? a complex item. Yeah. So, um, is, is it these three? 13, 14, 15? Uh, my and this one? Together. This one. Yeah. This one. This. And with the measure is saying that these are actually two smaller lots. Okay. And part of the lot we say, well, that merge. So is, is this, or are, are, are is yours really over here somewhere? This is 12 and 13. And this is 15, 15 and part of 14. Yeah, he merged because it, was, okay. it made it more conform okay. conforming. So this is where kind of the legal theory, this merger doctrine gets um, in the real life, not- Where is mud. Exactly. <laughs> so you have a property owner who's owned the property um, since 2006, now having to kind of deal with looking to convey this out to get the house developed. Um, and essentially saying, well, there was a merger back 22 years ago. But, but I'm, yeah. I'm I'm confused because I thought this the owner pays for taxes on this lot that are not, it's not taxed as a buildable lot. 
and it's labeled that as an accessory use lot. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, so he could just go build a garage there essentially is, is, but that's why we're in front of you because I'm saying that in my opinion, when you, we took the overall view of this neighborhood, this is actually considered a double lot. There are some lots that are only 0 0.1 over in that neighborhood. I know they're, they're existing non-conforming understand that but if we really are trying to look at lots here in Wareham that have sewer hookup um or have the frontage we're not looking for five variances we're looking for these twos really it's lot size if you decide that merger can be broken then it's the lot size is the other piece you have to say okay is this too small took me a while now I know exactly where I am Not to make things more confusing, nope, but yep. I read something about an easement. What what is happening with an easement on these properties? An easement? What's yeah, I, in the deeds. I was reading this earlier today, and I I oh within I the deeds. Realized there were so many deeds. Uh, I I didn't pull that particular easement. Um, but if it was an easement that would affect access, the engineers would need to put that on the plan. So if you're thinking like there's a easement to go across there, it could just be some, I could pull it to see, but I didn't think that it was necessarily something that we needed right now, but I can pull that book okay. and page. It just makes things yep. a little bit more confusing anyway, but I, I know, I know. <laughs> I guess one thing at a time, yep. trying to understand. <laughs> So the neighbors currently, I, I drove through there. Um, and you're saying that the neighbors, most of the properties are 0.20 acres. Yes, that was the average. But since, was it since 86 that the, or since, what uh, year did it change to become that it was, the, uh, that is a, how many, how many is required? Point, uh, 68 now? Yeah, they want 300 square feet for the lot size. So we're, you know, we are quite under it. Um, and do you know what year that happened? I don't, I don't have it off the top of my head, 80. Well, in 1979, the lot was purchased and the requirement was 30,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So I think it was very clear all the way back since 1979. At least. Oh, 1952. Are you heart. looking at the assessors? I'm looking at, yes. Pa no, Paul Turner's letter. It says oh, that okay. in 1952, the lots 513, 514, and 515 came into common ownership. So right. I'm assuming that's because it was 30,000. So since 1952, the 30,000 square foot requirement has been in existence. <clears throat> that's just what I want to, wanted to know, like, because I see a lot of deeds and purchasing going on. Yeah. I just wanted to know what information somebody might have had at the time of purchase. Yeah, I, I'd have to look into that. Um, I think when I went back through the title of everything that it was a situation that whether it was familial going back and forth, um, they unfortunately didn't keep things separate and it did merge. So those lots. Do, do you off the top of your head, do you know when the um, zoning in that neighborhood went to 30,000 square feet? I don't, I can look that up though. I can make yeah, a note of that. I, I, I got a feeling we're not going to make a decision tonight. And that yeah, be something yeah. We need when we come back. <clears throat> um, I, I think I, it was 1952. 52 came. According to Turner's letter, it was when it transferred title was. I thought. Oh no, common ownership in '79 they were conveyed when it was 30,000 square feet. So between 52 and 79, we don't know the exact date. But I know a lot of people in Wareham have been denied 
the ability to use land because they bought the lot next door. I can tell you from personal experience, my mom and dad bought two lots, put a house straddling the two lots, and between them and their neighbor was a vacant lot that was deemed buildable. And the guy was going to build a retirement home on it. And my dad said, gee, that would be beautiful. I'd love to have a retirement home right there. I'd sell this big arc. I don't have a house full of kids anymore. And I could move right there and stay in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. ah, I'm sorry. He said to my father, sorry, it's going to be my retirement. So my dad said, well, if you ever change your mind, let me know. Well, lo and behold, several years later, the guy called him back and said, yeah, I'll sell you the lot. So he bought the lot and he went for a building permit. And guess what he got? Merger. A middle finger, right? Yeah. Yep. So, well, that's why we have a lot of people. I mean, there's a nice way of saying it, but I think the way I said it is most appropriate. Um, so, um, <clears throat> you know, that's what we have here. Let's, I'm going to cut right to the point. That's exactly what we have here. These people owned the lot, the land, when it became a 30,000 square foot zoning. They very cleverly took some of it and they separated it and they drew a plan for two lots and they sold off a piece of land that wasn't developable as a residence. And they waited enough years and hoped that they got a dumb enough zoning board <laughs> that um, it would be a good chance to put a house on it and cash in. And as chair of this application, I'd want to see the taxes paid retroactively to compensate because they've been paying taxes. I mean, if we were if we were generous enough to say, yeah, sure, go ahead, build on it. We need another house in Wayham, right down near the water. And the number 400,000 has been thrown around and we could use the tax revenue from a $400,000 house. But we could also use the retroactive tax revenue for all these years. They haven't been paying for a buildable lot. If it's going to be deemed a buildable, then if it's buildable, then they haven't been paying enough taxes. They owe some back taxes. So I'm just speaking my mind because um, what's going to happen is Pandora's box is getting opened up wider and wider and wider here. I don't know why the town put a um, sewer drop onto that lot, but I'm just I'm just giving you all I'm giving you as much ammunition as I as I can. So when you come back, because I'm going to recommend we continue tonight. Because if we vote tonight, I already know how I'm voting. Well, let me ask you this: give everybody a fair chance. Right, right. Um, let me ask you this: if merger wasn't an issue with the lots, so take completely merger out of that, which I think it would be helpful if I kind of. Well, you have this current plan, but some of the older plans to show you what what happened in particular, and then finding the actual zoning date changes, so then you can see the timeline that goes along with it. But if that merger wasn't into it, in it, just looking at lot size. If I was just looking at lot size and it was never owned by the same people, I'd have a whole different attitude. But the fact of the matter is, it was owned by the same people, and okay. I don't think they were ignorant to what they did. I think it was done. I'm just looking at it right now. And That's under my five minutes worth of study on this lot, looks like it was very cleverly manipulated so that <clears throat> there'd be a reason to come in front of a board and say, we have a hardship. And I don't believe in creating hardships. I just, you know, and when there's a real hardship, I want to grant relief. But when somebody is smart enough to know how to work around the rules and create and manipulate a hardship, I think they're abusing this board. So if I may, I respectfully disagree with that. I know you um, do it, Well, why and I think will be helpful. I don't think that that was the intention here because I, I see it on title when I see that happening. So I think what I'm going to do is pull all the deeds and essentially give you a memorandum that you guys can look at before the next hearing that will show each deed and what conveyed to him. That would be good information, but... Um, Veronica, were you done with your questions? We never gave pretty Richard much Troy a chance to speak. <laughs> yeah. Any questions? Not at this time. Seems no, we're gonna seems we're gonna continue it. Well, I'm not saying we're gonna, but I'm thinking that it might make sense. I, I um 
before we go any further, I'd like to see if there's anybody from the public here that's here on this matter. Is there anybody here that's here on this matter? Would you like to have any comments? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Come up, pick a microphone, say your name, your address. You don't have to give your blood type, but. No. <laughs> I'm uh, Jennifer Lovall. And, I live and who's that gentleman beside you? Ronald McCann. Ron McCann. You're both from Wareham. Five Where Hemlock. Five Hemlock. I own the property and I own 514 and 516 and I do have a house on that property. So. Um, Our concern is we're trailing the boat in and out of there and there's only you one way. To you got yeah, you got to. Oh, I'm sorry. You got to speak to the microphone. Right, let's. There'll be a line of people looking for autographs because you're on television oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> when you go out, they'll want to know you'll be famous. But well, our concern is we we trailer a boat in and out of there. Uh, we only have one way to get in and out of our home. It's a uh, dead end, and then there's water. Are you are you the you have five fifteen? Is it five fourteen? Yeah, five fifteen. It's it's a merged lot. The, the 15 and the half of 14 that were merged together. I, I don't know what half they're talking about because my map is, yeah. I have all of, but, but, yeah. Yeah, you'll figure out. the attorney that's representing the other party to come back and explain to us. But yeah. So you're the one that's, you're the waterfront property. Yes. Right, right. Yes. And you and you haul a boat in and out of, we trailer a boat in and out of there. Which, on which, the street or out of the water and into your property? Oh, street. The street. We, street. Drop okay. in, we go in Tempest Knob or wherever we drop it in, but it's parked at home. Yeah. And it's uh, on your own property. Correct. Yeah. Um, we have two cars in the boat. Um, and again, there's only one way in and one way out for us. And my also concern is... Um, the street's it, not wide enough? Right. No, it's, 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 there is no street. It's dirt. There's no barrier barriers. There's no formal uh, intersection, if you would. It's it's actually very wet down there. Um, okay. Yeah, and the the property they're talking about <laughs> building on at lunar high tide, the water comes all the way to the back it's side. It's a high of flood it. plain. Super yeah. long. These people will have waterfront property for like four days. They're on stilts and looking over the top. Right, of but even and they and couldn't drive into their driveway. <laughs> Correct. So I mean, this is these are uh, seeing yeah, it all. I'm the time. sorry. I'm, talking with you and I should just let you so what's your your concern all right they're going to build this structure it's going to be on stilts and that's the only way I see it happening um I'm formally trained as a plumber in my background so I've been around construction and we actually wanted to purchase this property two years ago and that because it's a corner lot uh we are neighbors everyone's close down there we wanted to kind of beautify the place up because it's nothing but a, uh, it's clean now because he sold the property and all that other stuff that went down behind closed doors. Yeah. It's just, you know, I mean, who, you know, we're going to go in and turn a profit. That's what we're all looking for, right? But who's going to be buying this? He's going to be gone with his check and who's going to be living there? You know, what kind of quality people are going to be living there? Um, I got, we have a grandson on the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I just don't see it's practical. I mean, you're trying to slam a, uh, six sardines in a four uh, can for four. Well, but I got you. I got you already you. have that in that neighborhood anyway. You know, right? it's yeah, yeah, it's tight. Down yeah, there. well, I, I know when I put my shed on my property, right? I mean, I couldn't even use half of my property because it's within 50 feet of the marshland. And actually, the property they're wanting to build on, the first 50 feet of it it's, is touching the marshland. So they're not. I, I don't even There's know. The whole property is in the marshland. Hmm? That's correct. No, not the whole thing, but it, it, the first it, 50 feet of it. And it, we were told we couldn't put any building within 50 so, feet. So we got our shed approved. To encapsulate because we don't want to go down. Yeah. No, no. About peanuts and uh, eating popcorn, you know? Yeah. Um, your objection is you can't get your boat down the road the way it is now. And if they build a house, and it's not so, it's, well, that's just yeah. one. I mean, you know, yeah. again, how many cars are we going to have over there? Um, again, who's buying the house? Uh, you know. But yeah, my objection would be I, in the wintertime, you get one narrow, they that's clean they the snow, wow. one narrow, so you can't park on the road at all, and you can barely get in and out. With I guess you'd have to lane. do a drive-by to understand so. what we're uh, yeah, we probably will in the meantime. Yeah. You know, the road is certainly the, looking at. I'm looking at the locus. I'm looking at this, and it looks like 
on paper, the road is plenty big. It's bigger than what is um, in other areas of the neighborhood. It doesn't show the vegetation. It doesn't show the vegetation. That's yeah, it's all covered there. over. So, but I mean, if, if you went down there right now, it's it, the slot is pretty much a lake. face, but there's still a face under there. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, it, doesn't, right. it doesn't change. No, understood. Yeah, and, and, understood. Yeah, and that road's not maintained right okay. now either. So, it, like, there's water in the road, standing in the road year round, pretty much. So, what a lake right. right now. But, Any that's... other comments or concerns? No, your, no. Your, your concern is safe. Basically, yeah. Okay. You know. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anybody else in the room tonight is here on this matter? Okay, hearing none. Um, you guys have no further questions. Nope. I'm not. I'm not satisfied at this point. Would you like to request a continuance? I request a continuance. Um, we have a request for a continuance. Is you guys okay with that? Yes. I'll make a motion to continue. You got a second to that? I got a second. Okay, we got. It's been first. It's been. It's been requested by the applicant. Motion by Veronica, seconded by Richard to continue. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Let's have it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for working with us. Thank you. Two weeks, right? Two weeks. Uh, the next meeting is every every the second and fourth meeting, fourth Wednesday of every month. It'll be the twenty so eighth. Next, next meeting will be the twenty eighth. Next item on the agenda, 27-22, Carlton White, Jr., 17 West Central Ave. That's been read for the record. Last time, right? You guys opened it? Yep. Right. Carlton White, 17 West Central. Yes. Need you name an address, sir, for the record? Uh, Carlton White, it's 17 West Central Ave and Onset. All right. All right, let's hear it. The note has been read in part and the record last time, so we're not going to read the note as I can. So let's. Okay. Um, well, if, if if I could, I put it enclosed in a packet, a note to the board. Yeah. Um, kind of laying out my um, my thoughts on uh, regarding the appeal. Would you mind if I read it or? Yeah. Oh. But, Go ahead. Uh, this this appeal is regarding our building permit request for to raise and reconstruct our single family home at 17 West Central Onset. Our permit was denied based on a the FAR uh, ratio, the FAR ratio, floor area ratio. Yes, and it was uh, 41 percent, which is more than the allowed 30 percent for our lot size. Our our proposed footprint for the First floor, now proposed, plus the front porch is about 27% of the overall lot size of 3,750 feet. The current footprint is approximately 26%. So um, the, the actual footprint of the house is not changing very much at all. Um, our proposed site plan and architectural drawings for the home are very nearly what is already existing for a current home as to the actual footprint. The proposed footprint has met our, certainly our objectives for preserving the current character of the home that goes with the neighborhood, as well as uh, when we have been used, what we've been used to for open spaces around the house. Um, we wanted to preserve as much open space around our house, um, maintaining, uh, that part is a priority. At the same time, we have added, and this is where I've gotten into trouble with the, the FAR ratio. I've added over our the back part of the house, we have a single story. Uh, it was probably added on, I don't know, 50 years ago or something or, or longer. And it, it's basically a kitchen and a bathroom. And um, and there is a small uh, amount of foundation uh, cellar under that. And so it, what we wanted to do was put the second floor there 
that we could accommodate two uh, small bedrooms, reasonably sized, but two small bedrooms. And then there is, um, which is pretty typical of a lot of the houses down there, is like a wraparound porch around the front and around the side. And years ago, at some point, that one one section of that was enclosed as part of the living room. We wanted to build up over that. So adding that square footage to the second floor is what's hurled me over this ratio. But, you know, I think that the ratio is a pretty tough thing for you, I'm sure, because it, when when I started comparing all of the other properties in the area, a lot of the existing homes in the area are, are well over that 30 percent. Some of them are 60 percent. There's some three stories down there that I would say are 100 percent, although I can't find the records in in the town yet because they're relatively new. Um, but what I did also is I added in uh, a section, a table in there. I don't know if you saw this in the packet. And basically what I've laid out is our current structure, what the specs are on it, what the proposed would be. And then the, the other structures that I've had uh, that I put on this are the folks that would have received an invitation to this hearing or the last hearing. And uh, because they're my neighbors um, on that on that block and across the street. And so the purpose of this document was really just to show that basically how well I think my home fits into the rest of the neighborhood there. If even if you look at the the, the square uh, footage of the total living space, you know, uh, I'm I'm pretty good in the the new in the proposed at 41 and a quarter, um, direct abutters are 53.01, 42.96. Um, two other direct abutters, one is 33.36 and the other is 62.43. And that's in the living space. In the When you look at the footprint, which I, I think is really <laughs> what preserves the neighborhood, it, you know, to the best of our ability, is the uh, in that area um, at 26.28 percent for um, my proposed structure? I think there's one home. There's one home that has a better uh, footprint along those lines, and that is an extraordinary uh, size lot. It's really uh, a, a huge double lot, seven thousand. Uh, square foot lot, uh, very large. So, I mean, based on what, you know, what I, the, the attraction for us to that area is all these little houses, you know, and all of the, uh, and we, we're fortunate that we have some space with ours. We even have a driveway. So um, our intention is to preserve all that and to fit in with the neighborhood and um, looking for, um, I guess, an approval for my request based on the fact that uh, I, I, I took a lot of pains to try and stay at least in the, within the footprint uh, as much as I could. Um, I had considered overhang in that back section of the of the uh, second floor and maintaining precisely the footprint, but I was told that those are very difficult to get approved to have like the old garrison type of houses with the overhang. And so we we decided if we picked up an extra two and a half feet on the back section, that would accommodate these uh, bedrooms upstairs. So that's it's my case, and I'm sticking to it. All right, very well. You did very good home, good job doing your homework in this sheet. Thank you. That's very good to see the neighbors. However, we need architecture plans. They should have been included in the architectural plans to the. Uh... I, we need something bigger than this, and it has to show the FAR here. It doesn't show, and this is unreadable. I know it. Two by three plans. I did architecture plans. I did also uh, leave Sonia with a very large full size plan. Uh, and um, 
architectural plans of the house. I can't get six pages. I know I can't either. But it in in my um, in the application it requested a eight and a half by eleven sheet in in this. So I put it in, but I did include the uh, the full size architect. This for the for the requirements, right? Which you gave us an architectural as well, but we don't have it yet. So you did turn one in. Yes. Yep. Full size plan stamped. Hold on, let me see if you, here, here, Nazi, it might be stapled on the. Like a big one. That's. I also sent everything electronically too. Uh, so, it, it, and I did I'm architectural plans here. Yeah. No. And I did pester Sonia regularly for what. <laughs> what right, do I need? need what do plan, I but need? let's discuss it quick. Mm -hmm. So now that we have something big, how about the footprint? Are you changing the footprint? The footprint in the back, uh, on the um, the side that is uh, the, that has the bulkhead. On that side, that wall is coming out about two feet, and then on the other side, you can see how it's kind of tapered in there. That is just gets squared off. And so the total of the two of them is about two and a half feet bigger than the current footprint back there. All right. On and, re the and really that bulkhead is, you know, the... Uh, What's the FAR here? Why it's not on the plan? What's the allowed use? Uh, it should be in the lower corner there, I think. 30% is the FAR there? Yes. And you look at 30 and you're looking for 40? Yes. And what do you have now? That should have been. On I, I have twenty one, about twenty one. I don't. I don't think. I'm not sure if I saw that there. Okay, you have twenty one. Well, twenty one, twenty one point eight. Yeah. All right. We we could we could discuss that. You, on the on the building coverage and the impervious surface. Because you're an existing non-conforming, the board can act upon it as a special permit if the board feels there's no such detriment to the neighborhood. However, on the FAR, it's definitely going to have a variance because you're in compliance with the FAR. Uh, we could start discussing it. So we have two things here. If we can... The only thing the commissioner on, has denied them on is FAR. only thing he's denied them on. Well, uh, impervious as well as bigger uh, going higher. See, another one percent. He probably didn't because he has the existing 26 going to 27 and 53 going to 54, which we could do this as a special permit, not a problem. So, the most important thing the FAR, let's discuss FAR now and we'll, for, we'll wait for architectural plans for next time. Veronica, what do you, Veronica, what do you think? Uh, so I reviewed all of your documents and stuff ahead of time. Um, and there are a few um, questions that I have for you for what you want to do. As I think we all know, living here, Onset is pretty congested in some areas. And mm -hmm. that road in particular, um, it's, it's never anywhere to park. It seems to be very difficult. Um, so what I was trying to understand what you were saying about are you trying to add a second kitchen so that you have a second unit? You said there was no, no second floor for two bedrooms over the kitchen. Okay. Okay. Cause the, so, yeah, the back kitchen. It's, I went by your property. Yeah, I, Someone mentioned that. You, yes. They, yep. Yeah. And, and your, your neighbor had nothing but good things to say about you. <laughs> she's, she's, um, but my concern about the FAR in onset is always congestion. And that's one of the reasons why floor area ratio becomes important because on sit by right in a W2 dwelling, you could put a second apartment, which obviously would increase the amount of people coming and going pretty much typically if you end up with two families there. So that's my main concern. Yeah. I'm very happy to hear that you're looking to just have a single family. So um, that's good. 
I don't know how, um, that being the case, I'm all for what you would like to do with this um, because I don't, you're talking about two bedrooms. The only concern that I have is if we allow you to go to 1,547 square feet, my concern then becomes the next person that buys your property, if they want to split it up and make a second unit, there's a minimum requirement that they have to meet. I don't remember what the amount is. It won't make it. Wouldn't they be denied? 650 is 1,300. Mm -hmm. So anything over 1,300 could then be divided. Um, so I guess I, I would be fine with this project if there were some kind of restriction to keeping this as a single family dwelling. I guess that's... You could be clear. Yeah. You can. How would you feel about it? Uh, uh, recorded get the registry on your deed a restriction that this always remained in a single family home. Absolutely. You'd have no problem. No problem at all. Through it. Excuse me? Through it. Oh, through it. What's it, yeah, yeah, it? You know, I, yeah. Yeah. But I still want to see an architecture better. And, and the size has to be under 1,300 square feet. Under 1,300? What's your total you have right What's your proposal? 1540 oh, of the living space. Yeah, 1547. I'd have to. Including, if you exclude bathrooms and hallways and closets. It, it's going to be under that. And the other thing, what about stairways? Um, I mean, currently, right now, the stair we have in there is somewhere between a stair and a ladder. And uh, so we're going to put, you know, real legitimate stairs on the left hand right, well, side. This is what I want you to do next time. You're going to bring it. Outback engineering, you're going to show the FAR on the stable, bring your architecture plans showing the living space without hallway stairs, bathrooms, and closets. Okay. How much living space can come back to us next time? How's okay. That? Yes. Before we go, uh, Troy, before we go, I didn't think you're thinking <laughs> I, I actually like the plan, so I don't really have any questions right now. I'd like to look okay. at them. I'm fine with it. All right. On the public, who wants to speak in favor? Sorry, Jay. Public, go ahead. Anybody Anyone in favor? On this matter? Or against? Jimmy, sorry, I passed you. No problem. It wouldn't hurt. It would help me. Um, and you, you did a great job, by the way. Yeah, that. Thank you. Representing yourself, you. You're, you're representing yourself very well. It wouldn't hurt. It would be helpful if we had um, current photographs of your property and up and down the street. And the, the ones, some of the ones that you put on this chart, or just you know, a general of sound sounds like he turned it all in, it just didn't get to us. You turn pictures too, photographs. I, you know, photographs it's so, it's it seemed like it the most she would want would be one, and so I didn't I didn't put that in, but so next time get a few pictures, okay? I have you know, I do have small architectural like plans right here. This should have been. Including it. <laughs> Can you get the plans too by doing architecture and this at least couple of them? Yes. This is. Uh, if, you can't, if you can't get the architect to draw by the next, just ask for continuance. Okay. Do you have the set already drawn? I have a set here. Oh, so you already have them. We just don't have them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it should. Okay. And it, okay. it went electronically. He, he, he bent over backwards, got everything to sign you. For some reason, we just don't have it in our package. So we need to have all that put in front of us and we can vote on it. Can you get a two by three next time? At least one so we could see it better. Two by three. Yeah. And have your architect add up the numbers with our closets, hallways, okay. bathroom, and stairs. Okay. Okay. That being said, can we get a motion to continue? So move. That's Do I have a second on second. the motion to continue? The second by Troy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So we'll see you, you on the 28th. 28. 28. The, these uh, additional documents, deliver them to Sonia? Or bring them with you next time. Bring them with you? Okay. It's better you deliver them. Okay. But if you don't have time, just bring them with you. No, no problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> item in the agenda. Vic, did you see them as part of an email? Because yeah. I looked at the emails. I looked online. <laughs> he sat right there and said that he had given okay. everything to Sony. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see them. Oh, I said that it came out we didn't we just didn't have the what he just said there. So he explained that he had sent over backwards. Sonia's going out and picture of the other. It doesn't allow me to. I do. Because that office is short handed. They lost their assistant. And Sonia's been away for two weeks. So that's what happens. So we're working on the round. Not that gentleman. It's not his fault. You're no. absolutely right. That's no. right. That's not the end of the world. It's sure. only going to be two weeks later. Your, right. your point. Yeah. All right. So the neighborhood planning office. Everybody's soon. What is his name? <laughs> what happened to me? Is this yeah. All right. Continue public hearing 28 22 Wareham PV1 LLC 0 25. Anyway. We've got two, Please, two if you want, if you want to Yeah, perfect. So this is um I think this has already been read in last meeting. It was it's continued, yep. but nobody knows what's going on, Thanks. so the chair is ready. He's going to invite you to sure. get us up to speed. So I guess the note has been read. Yes. For the records, name and address for the record, and let's hear it. Name and address, ma'am. My, my address? Yes. Oh. Name and address. Uh, Haley Orvidal, um, on behalf of Long Road Energy, and my home address? The office address. Oh, uh, I, think, I think it's 330 Congress Street in Boston. Okay. So, so let's hear what's that. We're trying to do that. What's what are you looking for variants? Yeah, so I'm and Betsy, I think you're on mute. Um I so am, I apologize. Betsy uh tested positive for COVID over the weekend, which is why she can't be here, but she is really yes. gonna lead this on Boom. yeah, yeah. And she's gonna kind of lead most of this on on behalf of us. Um and then Sarah is on our engineering team and the only thing we can get from her is a computer virus <laughs> yes that's right yeah <laughs> which which is probably just as well <laughs> yeah um, yeah on the internet <laughs> uh, uh, betsy mason with claven's law group uh for long road energy um oh there i am uh no. 420 boylston street oh. in boston massachusetts oh, um and as as one second betsy Time out. sure 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 glory i gotta give you the floor to speak you can't speak if i don't give you the floor Oh, my apologies. I was just introducing myself. And we're going to wait on some more volume, Betsy. For All right. You. Who would like okay. to speak? For her? We're gonna let Betsy speak. Okay, so let's put your volume up. I need your name and address. Betsy, her name? Betsy. Betsy. Uh, name and address for the record, please. Uh, yes. Betsy Mason with Claven's Law Group uh, for Long Road Energy. Address is 420 Boylston Street in Boston, Massachusetts. Okay, so let's hear it. All right. Well, we are here before you this evening um, uh, seeking a variance for certain from certain setback requirements. Uh, uh, and we can we're obviously going to discuss them at great length, but um, I can sort of back up and give you the big picture. But first, um, I want to say Haley introduced Sarah Eba, who is with BHB. And uh, if we could allow Sarah to share her screen. It will make everything that I'm saying a lot. Uh, it, it'll be more useful, I think, for both the board and, and members of the public to see um, specifically what we're talking about here. So um, Longer Energy, uh, actually it's project company, Wareham PB1 LLC, uh, filed a site plan review application with the planning board for this 3.5 megawatt project uh, on a parcel uh, known as Zero Route 25, right up a charge pond road, right behind the municipal maintenance facility. Um, and uh, we've been uh, going back and forth, uh, mostly productively with the planning board over the course of the past year, because we did file last September uh, on a number of issues. Um, we have 
been working to respond to questions that not just the board and the peer reviewer raised, but as I said, also the public to the extent um, you know the public has raised issues. Uh, and one of the big issues, uh, or at least one of the issues that has been the topic that was a topic of discussion for quite some time was uh, setback requirements. What are the setback requirements uh, for this particular project, which was, which are applicable to this project? As you know, the bylaw has um, uh, a solar uh, a solar section. And uh, let me just preface that by saying, um, and I won't go too far into this, but I can certainly answer questions um, because for a number of reasons, we're operating under not the newly adopted bylaw, uh, but the prior version of the bylaw. Um, so uh, that version of the bylaw in sections uh, 594, 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5, uh, basically imposes 50 foot setbacks uh, in combination with vegetated buffers. So you've got this 50 foot vegetated buffer uh, all the way around a uh, large ground mounted solar energy facility uh, in certain circumstances. Um, and I can get into more detail here, but uh, essentially we don't believe that the requirements applied to this project uh, just based on the plain language of those sections of the bylaw. Uh, the planning board disagrees uh, and we've we've tried to come to uh, uh, a middle ground on what seems reasonable for uh, for setbacks given the location of the project. Um, and the 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 image you have before you, uh, which is uh, basically shows the parcel uh, with it, with the panels and it's in green, uh, is uh, probably maybe the third or fourth iteration of uh, our plans. Uh, and this is uh, this is basically, uh, as you can see, does not show 50 foot setbacks, but does show vegetated buffer uh, of various sizes along certain uh boundaries of or certain of the project's boundaries uh basically we believe that the planning board has more or less um i won't say that they've approved this because they haven't uh and i won't say that they've you know flat out agreed to it but um basically the planning board suggested that um if we were to set aside the uh disagreement over what the actual meaning of these applicable provisions is um, and you know sort of set that that technical word-based squabble aside and just focused on what uh, what setbacks would be appropriate for this parcel based on the location and the the nature of the surrounding parcels um, that we would we would come up with this plan and the planning board could not itself waive the 50 foot setback vegetated buffer requirement um, but that the, the zoning board of appeals obviously could grant a variance from those requirements. So um, essentially in consultation with the planning board and after some conversation, um, and again, I won't say recommendation, but conversation with uh, town planner Buckland, um, we've come to you to see if we can um, in fact get a variance from those setback requirements, very wordy. Um, so, um, Sarah, can we sort of do more of a comparison now? Um, uh, so obviously, and as you know, the the, the several uh, matters before this one uh, this evening, uh, at least a couple of them pertain to variances. So we we the, the board has already um, enumerated uh, uh, the the three basic criteria under both state law and the town's bylaw uh, for. Uh, what's necessary for it to grant a variance. Um, and uh, essentially we believe we have satisfied uh, each of those three criteria. Uh, the first criterion uh, has to do with whether there are circumstances relating to the soil condition, shape or topography of the land or structures for which the variance is requested, which especially affect the land, that is this parcel, but do not generally affect the zoning district in which the parcel is located. Um, here, uh, we 
basically have uh, unique circumstances that affect just this parcel uh, in the form of the, the fairly unique or unusual configuration of this parcel. Uh, you know, I, I described it in my uh, application, my letter that accompanied uh, the variance petition as, uh, you know, it's a, a musical note or an upside down ax or perhaps a golf club. But uh, the, the point is, this is not your standard, nice, uh, you know, square or even roughly, you know, trapezoidal uh, Parcel. This is a, a very strange, winding, lengthy, skinny parcel, um, and uh, we have essentially tried to make the best of it and uh, to put to to basically put this otherwise uh, unused parcel into the stream of commerce, as it were, um, to make good use of it, highest and best practical use of the of the parcel. Um, by proposing the solar facility. So, um, you know, what, what is so unique about it? Just to sort of give details, um, the parcel is a little bit more than a half, half mile from north to south. Um, at the top, it's about, oh, maybe a little bit over uh, a tenth of a mile wide. And the bottom, it's a little bit over like, more more than that, but as you'll note, the entire middle section, uh, essentially, that's no more than 150 to 250 feet wide, uh, which does not leave a lot of room uh, to do much of anything. Um, so, basically, we our position is that the shape uh, just makes it hard to. But that's a unique circumstance. Um, second criterion is, and the first hearing this evening went into this quite a bit. Um, you know, is there would literal enforcement of the uh, bylaw provisions that we're seeking the variance from um, pose a substantial hardship, whether financial or otherwise, uh, that is based on the uh, these unique circumstances. So, in other words, here. Um, would in would would enforcing the front the, the front yard side yard and backyard setbacks that the planning board believes should be or at least initially took the position should be applied here uh, would would application of those um, cause financial uh, substantial hardship to uh, the petitioner to the property owner. Uh, here and uh, in short, uh, here's where I should really let uh, a picture speak a thousand words that I'm not being remarkably articulate and getting out of my mouth and I'll blame COVID for that. So my apologies. Uh, but the the image on the bottom, the figure on the bottom uh, shows, uh, yes, where, the, where Sarah's pointing the red. This is, this is what uh, imposition of that 50 foot setback slash vegetated buffer uh, would look like. I mean, we didn't fill it in in green, so you couldn't see it vegetated, but you can see that we've um, imposed that setback on on the parcel boundaries and then uh, attempted to fit uh, uh, panels within within that that those constricted uh, areas. Uh, so bottom line is, um, we go from uh, close to 850 panels to uh, just about 600 panels, 614 panels. Um, and it may not sound like a very big difference, but in fact, um, there's an impact to uh, the megawatt capacity that the project can have um, with, with this reduced, this reduction in the number of panels. Um, and uh so that that will make things uh, that essentially leaves Long Road in a position of uh, you know perhaps perhaps the project is not in fact financially viable. Um, uh, another hardship, uh, another point of hardship is if you see it in the bottom uh, on the northern part part of the property, which is actually to the 
yes, up where Sarah's pointing, um, it's actually impossible to fit the access, access road uh, into the northern portion of the site without going into that 50 foot setback. Um, and the reason it's important to have an access road, obviously um, the, it, the access road has to be 20 feet wide. There has to be an access road um, to comply with the fire code. And um, Long Road has, uh, you know, gotten sign off from the fire chief for a 20 foot access road here. He's requiring that. Uh, so it, it, it renders things even more uh, difficult, makes it even more of a difficult build. Um, so to kind of sum that part up, I mean, in short, the 50 foot buffer uh, that starts at each property boundary and extends inwards towards the center of the property, as you can see here, really leaves a, a pretty large portion of the property, which is already difficult to build on, unbuildable, uh, and it could render the, the, the project financially unworkable uh, because we're really sort of scaling it down to fit onto these slivers. Uh, uh, and I think that's most noticeable in that, that middle stretch. Uh, further, uh, there would be substantial hardship to the, the current landowner because uh, he uh, is expecting a, uh, a rental income stream. Uh, but if a long road is unable to build the project because it's not financially viable, then uh, there will be no project and therefore no rental income stream. So that's, um, you know, to be somewhat crude money out of his pocket, but more uh, perhaps more importantly, money out of the community's pocket because uh, you know that's money that would be going to the community. Um, in addition, um, there's just the substantial hardship uh, to uh, the town in that if the project doesn't go forward, any uh, tax payments that that uh, would be you know that the long road would be paying to the town over the life of the project. Um, I mean, I, I understand this is perhaps speculative, but I mean, that's hardship nonetheless. Um, that, that tax income will not flow to the town. And um, finally, in a little bit more, um, you know, theoretically, figuratively, um, you know, the substantial hardship to uh, the electric grid and to uh, efforts to move away from fossil fuels and uh, move towards renewable energy. Um, so, um, finally, uh, and, and certainly not, not the least important is that, um, we do believe that this board can grant this variance without running afoul of the bylaws overall or causing some great harm to the public good. Um, we're going to be complying with, um, all of the other applicable, uh, provisions of the bylaw, um, the property is uh, uh, as actually uh, at least one planning board member has acknowledged is actually a very good location for a solar facility because it is um, while it's in a residential district, it is not adjacent to any residential uh, uh, property or use. Uh, in fact, it's stuck behind the municipal maintenance facility. I uh, you know it's got that on one side and, uh, uh, cranberry bogs on the other. So it's uh, a, as things go in a, in a, a town as developed as as Wareham, it's it's a fairly isolated location, at least one that's you know set back uh, and and not likely to cause any you know, noxious uh, effects on on the surrounding neighborhood. Um, it's not it's not uh, granting the variance and variances thereby allowing the project to go forward means this parcel you know, won't be developed as, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a commercial facility or a, you know, uh, uh, a subdivision of some number of houses with uh, increased traffic. There really will just be uh, maybe one or two truck visits a month, if that, uh, for uh, maintenance and monitoring. And um, finally, um, Well, I guess I guess that sums it up. And again, my apologies uh, for being less than articulate, but uh, uh, Paxlovid is good, but it's not that good. <laughs> All right, very well. 
Well, my opinion is definitely the shape of the lot does meet the statue of a variance. But let me ask you a question. The by the a bylaw says fifty of buffer or fifty feet raise. I mean, what's the setback to the fence to the structure? No, it, that's an excellent question, and I I sort of uh, hopped over that only because this is a point of disagreement between uh, Long Road and the Planning Board. Um, <laughs> The setback is, okay, I guess what we can start. Uh, my reading of the, and I think, I think the planning board is from the uh, property boundary. Um, the issue is that um, it, taking the front yard depth requirement as an example, um, that provision is uh, 594.1.3 provides as follows. The front yard depth shall be in accordance with Article 6 of the zoning bylaw, provided, however, that where the lot abuts or is across the street from a residential district or residential development, the front yard setback for all structures, including fencing and vegetated buffer, shall not be less than 50 feet, uh, maybe more, uh, depending on the visibility of the facility, and it goes on. Um, and each of these uh, yard depth or setback requirements is more or less along those lines. And, and um, our point is we will concede, of course, this uh, proposed project and the parcel is in a residential district, zoning districts in the R130 district. However, um, the lot does not abut a residential district. It's just in a residential district. It's not across the street from a residential district. It's in it. And it's certainly not across the street from any, any residential development. Um, the planning board says, you know, hey, you know, let's be reasonable here. Obviously, the bylaw is not meant to say residential district. It's meant to say um, across the street from a, a residential, uh, residentially zoned parcel. Um, and uh, you know, I guess as a, a, a an attorney and therefore sort of a, a stickler for detail, um, I'd have to say on the face of the bylaw, it's pretty clear that it says district. And if the you know if, if town meeting wants to adopt a uh, bylaw provision that clarifies that um, it can, but right now, uh, you know, the word district is used specifically in many other portions of the bylaw. Um, so that's a very long-winded answer to your question as to what the setback is from, um, but it's it's from the property boundary, but only under these specific circumstances uh, that are delineated in each of these three sections. So I think that I, I did notice that uh, Mr. Buckland is on the call and perhaps he can vouch for this, but it, it seems to me that we kind of, we in the planning board talked about this over some number of months and finally sort of um, at least uh, kind of agreed to disagree, to consider it, perhaps to consider it a draw and for us to come before the ZBA for a variance because the planning board acknowledged that while it did look favorably upon that that top figure showing, uh, you know, the uh, some buffer uh, in in various areas around the property that um, you know it couldn't grant a waiver. The planning board can't waive substantive requirements. In fact, I'm not sure. I don't think this planning board can even waive submission requirements, which is which is uh, you know many planning boards can do. So here, where they um, wanted to be able to agree to uh, some setback slash vegetated buffer that was less than 50 feet they're unable to do so because they don't have the authority uh under the bylaw to just to waive that requirement and i'll wrap this up but let me just also point out um we are seeking a variance from the 50 foot setback slash vegetated buffer all the way around the property however we are not um going to take the variance and then build out all the way to the property boundary. Um, the, the, the figure on top, on the top of your screen here, um, which, which shows you know, a 25 foot vegetated buffer along the Southern boundary of the municipal maintenance facility, um, a 30 foot buffer, uh, new buffer, uh, bolstering existing vegetation along the Eastern boundary of the municipal maintenance facility, 
we oh and then also uh, a 25 foot buffer to uh, to sort of bolster the uh, the vegetation that is currently exists within the state highway layout. Um, we we are committing to to having those setbacks slash vegetated buffers. So it, it, I mean we're we're not just saying you know this doesn't apply. We're just gonna we're gonna just gonna build on every square inch of the property. Um, we recognize that the town doesn't want to have to be looking at this from the municipal maintenance facility. Um, Chairman King for the planning board was very clear that uh, uh, passersby on, on Route 25 shouldn't necessarily have to see it uh, and, and noted that uh, the, uh, the blue wave parcel further to the east um, um, is, has got uh, uh, a, a buffer in addition to the state highway layout buffer. Um, and, and there actually, one more point, and then I will be quiet. <laughs> um, Sarah, can you pull up the second page of the, the, yes. Um, so one comment that, um, or what one, one idea that, um, uh, the planning board's peer reviewer put forward and, and pushed a bit during these discussions. And some of the board members also raised the question, um, you know, why, it, why is this a big deal? What, you know, what, 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 why can't, you know, why can't you just do it like the Blue Wave project or one of the four Blue Wave projects to the east did it? Um, uh, and by which I mean, you know, why can't you just put the 50 foot buffers around your project sites the way Blue Wave did. And um, our response uh, without any illustration was, um, well, because the shape of this parcel really won't allow us to build the project and also have those 50 foot buffers, whereas the shapes of um, the, the four different Blue Wave parcel or Blue Wave project sites, and in fact, the layouts of those projects um, are much more uh, uniform. Uh, they're not quite as perfect as this rectangle that Sarah's pulled up here, but um, they are much. They were much more easily able to to not have to fight the buffer or the fifty foot setback requirement because they could have the same size parcel, twenty two point four acre parcel like ours is, um, in you know this sort of very standard shape and they could both have 50 foot setbacks and still have 982 panels um, whereas we uh, because of the shape of the parcel on which we're building um, if we were to have the 50 foot setback imposed would uh, only be able to to install the you know roughly 600 panels so Again, I mean that's uh, you know more than a third less, and um, I, me, perhaps Haley can explain this better than I if if you wish. But um, the impact on uh, number of panels goes directly to uh, generating capacity of of the facility, you know, electric power generating capacity of the facility, which goes to financial viability of the project. Um, so. I mean, I, I think that just uh, is sort of an, an effort to to show, you know, the loss uh, that that would be caused by the fifty foot buffer on this particular parcel. All right, thank you, Councilor. We'll get the message. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yep. No comments at this time, Jimmy. What do you want? Who owns, what, what's the land? I know where the municipal maintenance department is. I know where the mm -hmm. highway is. I know where the primary bogs are. But what's that treed land? I guess I'd call it north of the narrowest portion there with the where, that town owned property. But, but that's town owned property as well. Yes. You mean to the, basically to the north or to on the figure to the right of the municipal maintenance facility? There might there might be a little sliver that is a another third party, but it's um it's pretty minor, but it's largely up up, up there. It's largely town. And so the 
if that's north, south, east, and west, if we call the top of that screen north. Okay. Actually, north is yeah. this way. Okay, so then but the western the portion west, west is owned by the town, and the northern portion is also owned by the town? Or... Yeah, uh, if, if you can see the little hand that Sarah has there, that hands, yeah, that's all town land. Okay. Correct. So north and west. And uh, then, correct. And then yeah. east is the property owner that's, that this is being built on. Uh, east of of this I, parcel, yeah. uh, is sure, sure oh. It's it's all it's cranberry bogs, um, and you know sort of uh, service areas for the cranberry bogs, but that's owned by Sure Cran. Okay, so it's never going to be a budding. It's never going to be unless the town decides to put housing there. It's never going to be in somebody's backyard. Exactly. Care. Exactly. I don't see it being a problem. Um, I have no further questions. Fletch. <clears throat> well, I'm going to start out uh, for the wildlife. There's not a lot of concern for the wildlife. There's already two huge solar fields that are up there that are not shown on any of these prints. Secondly, there's a corridor. Well, not secondly, along with the wild. That 495 that runs up there, that 50 foot boundary needs to be there because there's a corridor for those deer or animals, coyotes, whatever you like, need to get through there. By that, they're going to cut, cut it right off. And I don't understand why there's no activists here looking out for the wildlife and all these solar panels are going up. Secondly, I didn't understand what uh, she made a room. Uh, I couldn't understand her when she said that uh, develop the landowner was going to look for something else if this wasn't going to go through uh i believe mr fletch has done all right owning that piece of property i uh, don't feel that he's going to be hurting in any way if this doesn't go through um uh, taxes uh i don't understand why that could be thrown in our face about making a decision when we'll get taxes some way or another um and okay. all in all i just uh I don't I don't feel that we should give any variance to the 50 foot setback at all in this situation. I'm familiar with the wildlife. I know where they run. They're just going to run out onto 495, hit somebody's car. God forbid it's one of you that are building it and you get hit by a deer runs into you and you get killed. So I do not believe that this is a very good spot, a, a good spot at all for an electrical panel. And that's my views on this. Okay. Your views on electric panel period or just the setback? Just and the setbacks. Panel, it's okay with the... I, I'm, I'm, I, I think Wareham owns enough electrical fields. And we're, we're already putting up with one that's going to take a bunch of beautiful land up on Farron Hill Road, which I'm not a big fan of, but I'm not... In fa I'm not in favor of giving them a variance of the 50 foot boundary. Okay, Troy. I don't have any comments. All right. Uh, let's go to the public. Who wants to speak in favor of this project? Against? Okay, one other time, please. Whoever like first. Good evening. Um, my name is Barry Cosgrove. <laughs> Hope you'll be patient with me. Can you put it a little louder, please? Yeah. Barry Cosgrove? Yes. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you very much for your volunteer service to the town. And who do you represent, sir? Yourself or yourself? Myself and 15 other William residents, and I have their names and letters right here to present to you. So I'm going to try to convince 15 people's comments uh, as succinctly as I can. We urge that this variance request be denied. You know better than anyone the elements that have to be proven to get a variance. You can't prove one, you can't prove two, you got to prove them all. Well, I apologize. Is that better? Okay, I beg your pardon. First of all, astonishingly, 
What the petitioner is asking you to do is to say that we have a very valuable setback requirement from abutting lots in a residential area. But they're saying it doesn't apply because the abutting lots are in the same zone, which is like saying you take a pizza out of the oven, all the slices are side by side and abutting, but just because you put them in the same box, now all of a sudden they're not abutting. Earlier, uh, one of your members made the point about opening Pandora's box. Imagine what's going to happen when somebody gets a hand on a decision that says, oh, there's a setback requirement related to abutting lots, but if we're in the same district, it doesn't apply. It's in collision with common sense. The 50-foot setback is there for a reason. The notion is that you don't want an industrial application too close to residential lots. And what's proposed here would nullify this pivotal town by law, and it would arm, going back to Pandora's box, it would arm every solar applicant with the precedent to come in and say, no more 50 foot setback for anybody. This would substantially derogate the purpose of the bylaw. And the eligibility for a variance requires proof that it would not substantially derogate the intent or purpose of a bylaw. Also, the gentleman made the point about the setback from Route 25. I guess it's 495. I still call it 25 because of forest life, wildlife. Anybody who's driven north on that road knows the sun in your eyes on that section is brutal. Year round, it's brutal. Now you're going to add solar panel glare right off that highway to the equation. And then there's an exit right there, as you know, if you want to exit to get on 195. This would be a substantial risk. Second, the question is, does the desired relief cause substantial detriment to the public good? If you look at the map here, the question was asked, who owns the land? The town owns the land. So what if the town wants to subdivide those lots that they can and develop them and try to sell them? How are you gonna sell those lots with an industrial scale solar facility within 10 to 25 feet? The public good is not served by allowing uses that would devalue town assets. Additionally, the public good is not served by granting a favorable variance to a property with a checkered history. This applicant submitted its materials to the Conservation Commission, seeking, just as they are here, the ability to shoehorn as many shoe, uh, panels in as they can. They abandoned that application. The Conservation Commission is now investigating this applicant, uh, this property, for violations of the uh, buffer zone. And in this submission at Exhibit A, you'll see documentation of such. In addition, this property is on the list of the properties the town is evaluating for violations of earth removal. No. Additionally, this property was a subject of a dispute with the town, alleging that the town property had been invaded for sand mining purposes and resulted in economic settlement. What public good, a requirement for variance, is served by giving variances to properties that are under not one but two ongoing investigations. Finally, I appreciate your patience. The next requirement is that the enforcement of the bylaw will cause the applicant to suffer substantial hardship, including financial hardship. So the point was correct. It doesn't matter about the property owner. It doesn't matter about the taxpayers. It doesn't matter about the town. The applicant. And hardship to an applicant is not getting what they want. Hardship is not getting your best case. Hardship is not winning the lottery. Hardship has to be proven that there's an economic proof that the project they wanted is not economic if they have to play by the setback rules. And the point is, they've known about the shape of this lot for years. 
they had every opportunity to zone around it. And they were basically betting the farm on a variance. Then where's the cash flow statement? Where's the balance sheet? Where's the PL? Where's the CapEx budget? Where's the proof? If I come in here and tell you, I'm, you know, I'm going to not make money or lose money, so shouldn't I have to prove that? Not just say it? In fact, the only numbers you were given is if they played by the rules that have 75% of the panels they want. Not too bad. Excuse me, sir. How many, how many people did you say you had letters from? 15. 15, thank you. The petitioner's miscalculations should not be remedied by this board being pressured to solve their problem. The petitioner's variance application fails all of the required tests, and we respectfully request that it be denied. Would you like me to name the residents for the record here, or is the letter okay? Barry Cosgrove, Ingrid Valdez, Allison Stewart, Jeannie Lennon, Mike Lennon, Mr. and Mrs. George Ekman, Peabody Cortez, Karina Laura, Mary Horahan, J. N. Cal Conley, Paul Horahan, Annie Hayes, and Rick Pack. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Here's these uh, letters. Matt, go ahead. Matt, that should be added to the file. Yes, please. Just to answer a couple of things before you go, sir. I, I totally understand what you're saying. Uh, Earth removal violation, this is not our jurisdiction. That'll be with the selectmen. That has nothing to do with us as there's a value, uh, violation. Also, conservation violation, there's an issue that has nothing to do with us. I mean, if they have a problem, they have to stop them. So we cannot take in consideration. This is strictly zoning. So that could be all underwater. According to zoning, you could do it. But when he goes to conservation, it'll be denied. So we have no jurisdiction over them, and they don't have jurisdiction over us. And to go back to a variance, you're saying there's no hardship. I, that's my personal opinion. I think they have the perfect hardship is the shape of the law. That's a perfect hardship. Uh, that meets the statutory requirement of MGL 40A, Chapter 10 shape of the law and i don't personally again i speak for myself i don't believe it's detrimental to the neighborhood because there's no neighborhood that's my opinion sure i'll give i'll i'll give you a rebuttal but let's go back again to the board and ask Did let me to... let me answer you answer me yes sure i understand both your points very well but as a practical matter what does it say about our town I want, I, want, I want to talk legal. Let's call it legal terms. Okay. And then on the second point on it being narrow in the middle, then seek a variance for the narrow spot in the middle, not the rest of the 26 acres. They're trying to get it all. So I agree with you. It's a very awkward shaped lot, which they knew from the start. So in fairness to the town, shouldn't the variance be sought for that skinny portion where it becomes difficult and not for the whole thing, which is what they're seeking. And that, I think, is a distinction because the shape of the lot is a criteria, but to have one part of a lot be problematic shouldn't give you the green light to be able to have a variance for the, for the other 26 acres, approximately. That's, that's, that's an opinion. Everybody has a preference on that and opinion. I understand what you're saying, but I speak for myself only. We'll see what the board can do. You want to answer this gentleman? Uh, want to say anything? You want to say anything? Um, when it when it comes to a hardship, um, I don't think it's a hardship as well because they're still able to put a solar field, just not as many panels as they want. It's not like they have a a, a lot that they, um, you know, are trying to put a house on so we allow setbacks so that they can get the house on the lot. They're doing what they want. They just want more. So to me, that's not a hardship. Jimmy. So I've got a couple of things rolling through my head. I, I, I heard the bit about the set, setback on the narrow part. I also heard my fellow board member talk about the wildlife. And he used a, a term 
a, a, something about a path or a, a, so um, that's influencing my thinking. I, I guess I, is all I can say. Uh, I personally am um, an advocate of solar panels. I think we should, I'd like to see as many squeezed in as many places as possible, just because I think it's a step in the right direction. <clears throat> that, um, kind of moot to this application. Um, so maybe there is a middle ground here is all I'm saying that um, I don't, I don't know that we want to kill the project, but I don't know that they need to get 100% of what they're asking for at this point. Remember, they've told you 75% of the project fits without the variance. So I don't see how you'd be killing the project. I, I want to make sure if we have- If I may. Oh, I, Bailey, please go ahead. I, it, it, and Council, you got to wait a minute. So, okay. Uh, you want to answer the gentleman? <clears throat> oh, I'm on his side. Okay, <laughs> I I tend to agree with Veronica, um, and with Rich. I I really have an issue with we have the we just did this whole bylaw thing for the zone for solar for a reason, and if we keep changing it, I don't want to see more people coming before us looking for something that they don't really need. I totally understand. However, this. The bylaw was done quick. It was done unfair. And we have we have you have to pick something. I always say in solar panel, you have to pick something. If you don't want fossil fuel, you gotta take the trees. If you don't want gas, you 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 have to do solar panels. You can't have the pie and eat it. I, so, I want gas yeah, and I want it. You want them both. I want it all. <laughs> well, I'm a hybrid. Okay. But I think everybody get a shot at it. Why is just electric? I, I, I love, believe me, I love gas too, but whoever writes the bike. Electric vehicle, I don't. And I won't. I know, me too. But all right then. <laughs> right. I and I don't like electric vehicle myself either. But what I'm trying to say, whoever writes the bylaw, if you wanna call it three huggers, I admit I'm not one. They want the trees and they don't want fossil fuel. So how are you going to achieve this? If you notice now the federal government just passed a massive law. So if you went up in an airplane and you flew over this area and you looked at the amount of open space, wide open, where you wouldn't have to cut down one branch, let alone trees, and put in all sorts of solar panels, this is as good an area as any place on the planet to do that. But instead, we're doing the opposite. I didn't come to debate solar or non-solar. I came to, to address this application. Okay. And and your point about the solar bylaw being rushed, hurry, that's not let there be any mistake. This solar bylaw that's applicable here has been around for a long time. This isn't the one that's waiting for approval or not. This has been around for a long time. And very smart people, for some reason, said, hey, look, 50 foot is right for this. Well, I, I disagree. I think the people who wrote the bylaw were very unprofessional. I went to that panel and they were very, but that's besides the point. It is a bylaw and I agree with that and we're not going to argue no one, about it. No one no. Ever right. Bylaw. However, why do you think the shape of the law does not dictate a hardship? Because the law is very clear. That's one criteria, but it's all the other ones as well. And the Have criteria to be for in. passage and the total of the whole project, it's it, the hardship he has, the shape of the law will create a financial hardship because if, as the attorney uh, described, if that parcel was perfectly shaped, he could fit more panels. So the shape of the law, it it does the very, financial very hardship. Picked it, and, and if I may, it's not about him making money or her, I don't know who owns it, making more money or, or Mr. Fletcher, he's mentioned his name, making more money or less money. The law says if a shape of the law makes a hardship and dictates financial hardship, it is a hardship because that shape makes 
it creates a hardship. So the law. Now, whether he makes a dollar or a million, this is not our problem. So the law says there are three or more criteria that have to be met. So even if we would agree that despite they knew it for years and they could have planned around it and they could have addressed that funky shape in the middle, even if we agree on that, there are other tests that have to be met. Okay, the other test is that unique. I think it's unique. It's behind the PPW. Is it a detrimental to the neighborhood? No, there's no neighborhood. Now, I agree with Mr. Sample about the, uh, the setback on the highway, but what's the difference if you have a fence at 30 feet or at 50? If a deer gonna cross, it's still not gonna be able to cross if you go by what's what the play what without the variance. So it's not it's not gonna be able to cross. Well, my my, right. my point was is that the deer will go out onto the highway. Yeah, correctly, but and then I'm walk saying, in and run into somebody, which is the public, and that's public safety. I, I understand, but what's the difference if the fence that's is the that difference. Early that's or the difference. It's it's more room for him to go. Okay, that's that's your opinion. <clears throat> Anything would like to add, sir? No, I just, I just would like to say that I know that this is a difficult job you have, and I, as a citizen and all the other citizens here, we appreciate your service very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, where are the people who want to come forward? And you want to come forward? Which two? Jim and Nazi. Me, me and myself. We came forward. All right, ma'am, would you like to come forward? Is that better, Bob? Okay, sorry. I'm keep Bob happy. <clears throat> They're slow learners, Bob. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> it. That's... All right, ma'am. You let's, name and let's, let's try the mic. My name is Annie Hayes. I live on 52 Farmers Lane. Um, is that good, the mic? Yes. Good? Okay. Uh, Farmers Lane is. West Wareham. West Wareham, yes. Yeah, on the back side of Farring Hill. And first, I want to thank you for um, speaking for wildlife. And to your concern or your question about where do we put the solar, I've put three um, sets of panels on rooftops, and I love them. They're great. Um, but I wouldn't cut down the forests I have. Um, or on my land, the trees on my land. I plant trees so that we can have both. And if we keep doing projects that cut down the forests, then there's no incentive to do it where it's right. And I want to say that when I first started learning about solar on large scale developments, I would have looked at that site with the sand thinking, of course, it must be a quarry of some sort, sand mining, and that that's the degraded land that we're talking about putting solar on. But I've learned a lot since then. And I know buffers are not only to have visual screening, but to protect the adjacent land. And I am also concerned because there's been mining there and it's down to sand, the word buffer, now this may not be your domain, but the buffer between the aquifer and whatever is on that sand, the solar panels, is gone. The forest was the buffer. The forest is the perfect buffer for our water. And we better do something about our water because it's becoming more and more vulnerable. And sand permeates, you know, a kid on sand pours a bucket of water, whoosh, it disappears. It just goes right through and it goes to the water, the aquifer. And we're very fortunate to have it. It's our sole source of water for, I think, what, 80% of the town. So just imagine, and we had a little bit of a taste of it. We had a drought and that drought affected the aquifer. There's a person on the um, select board in Carver I was speaking to, back in 2016, they had a well that was dry and they didn't have anything to compensate. What did they do? He said, they crossed their fingers and hoped the public wouldn't notice. Lots of issues. So let me talk about why I'm concerned about what's on that sand. This I understand is a first solar, solar panel project. Is that correct? Uh, at this point, that's what's planned, yep. 
And first solar has um, cadmium telluride as its semiconductor. Um, a person that represented first solar, um, which is used because it's in a, it, it's not an expensive process. It the materials are getting are are rare, but um, the cadmium comes as a byproduct for for another um, uh, process. But um, the the guy who was representing first solar, the doctor chemist. Um, said that it has low solubility. It doesn't, it's not solu it's not easily soluble. And he was trying to convince people in the desert um, where they're putting in a 3.7 million cadmium telluride project. And the people wouldn't have it because cadmium is one of the six most toxic metals there is. So this fellow, the chemist for First Solar said, it is impossible, nearly impossible. It's very difficult to separate the cadmium, the telluride, so that it could leach out. And besides, it's very nicely sealed in. Well, so since that time in 2012, there are many studies, and I have two here that I'll leave with you. Um, one is by the University of Stutt Stuttgart Institute for Phot Photovoltaics and the Institute for Sanitary Engineering, Water Quality, et cetera, also Stuttgart. This was done in 2015. Another one is done in 2017. But they both point to the solubility of cadmium telluride and the ability of it to leach out of panels. And they didn't do the one day test, which had been typical. They did um, the three month test. There's one that I, I know of that did a, a year test because these things are gonna be there for how many years? 25 at least. I don't know if there are any re renewal of the lease in, in this project. They're gonna be there a long time. And we know that the weather is becoming more extreme. You have 105 degrees and then you have minus 10. And this is just a human sealant around these panels. You know, it, it, it's man-made. The back sheets are also vulnerable. And when the back sheet starts to have UV breakdown, it can crack and precipitation can get in and there can be leachate of that cadmium telluride and it can go right into the aquifer. So we're talking about a perimeter buffer. I'm talking about a base buffer. And I think we have to start talking about that more. It is so critical to our survival. Well, with all due respect, ma'am, this is not the place to talk about I know. this. I know. We want to stick with zoning here. Let me do one more thing about zoning. I have some acreage. What is going to stop me from making a lot that's something like that shape on my acreage? I'm in a place where maybe the neighbors won't see if there's only 10 feet, if I get the variance that I want, because it's going to be a hardship for me if I don't get that variance. I'm not going to be able to put the panels where I want because I want it to go around the barn or around the wetland or around the this or around the that. What is going to stop this variance from coming back to haunt you and all of us? Why isn't that a hardship for me if I can't get what I want? Well, right now, we've, what's before us is what's before us. I don't know what's coming tomorrow or next month or what kind of plan you have or plan to have. So this is not what's before us. I understand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, ma'am. Anyone else? Sorry, oh, sir, another hand. Yeah, come on up, sir. Name and address, please. My name is David Fletcher. I'm the, the property owner of the uh, discussed parcel. Um, and I heard, uh, just to clarify a couple things on the hardship. Barry said it wasn't a hardship because it was only a hardship to the applicant. Well, that is somewhat untrue because it is a hardship to me as the landowner. Um, 
you know, not to sound like a cry baby, but I work my fingers to the bone every day. Uh, my, I've been doing it for. Hey, let me stop you, Mr. Fletcher. The hardship is not for a person; it's for a land. Right. And just it just happened that I am apparently on your side, and your land does have hardship. That has nothing to do with you. Okay. Well, I, so I, I misunderstood. Not about the person. Okay. So whatever you want to say about the property, we talk about the property. Okay. I, I wanted to make a couple other clarifications yes. about the property as well. Um. Nobody mentioned this, but the property where the solar panels is going to sit is quite a bit lower than the surrounding land. So it's not visible. You know, even if the town would have clear um, that area that's between Charge Pond Road and the, the solar array itself, nobody would ever see the solar array because the solar panels only sit eight feet above the ground and the the land is about eight feet lower or 10 feet lower than the the mean average grade of the surrounding properties it would only be visible from the Shurkram property which is at about the same level on that side on the highway side with with respect to the wildlife um there's a fence that runs along the state highway uh, bound the state highway layout already so the deer can't go over or under that fence and that's been there since the 1960s when they built the highway so i don't think it's it's going to change the path of the wildlife in that respect because they can't get how tall is that fence it's it's probably about six feet tall i i would beg to differ i could go out there and measure it for you and i do not believe that it's six feet tall well, it's it's, well, it's 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 high enough where just just for the record, I'm pretty much sure that a deer could jump right over that. So if you want to contain a deer, you need to go at least twelve feet. Yeah. So, not... so that fence over there. The... Well, apparently the state put it for a reason, but anyway, we we don't. So right. Anyway, so that is a fence. So. Right. So I I just wanted to bring that clarification. Not that it it probably matters any, but it was just a. Uh, you know, when I heard him mention the wildlife, I said to myself, wildlife is also the people driving 60 and 80 miles an hour down there. That's kind of wildlife. Too. Oh, I'm sure. The other thing about the parcel is that section that does about, about the state highway is quite a bit higher than the layout of the road um, by about 15 to anywhere between 10 and 20 feet. So you know, if the buffer were to be reduced on that side, it's not visible from two passerbys on the highway either way because it's above their heads. The mo the, the vast majority of that line of panels would be above the, the elevation of the roofs of their cars. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks for your comments. Again, no, Anybody I guess. Else? Yeah. Anyone else? I hear none, so I guess there's mixed feelings here. So I think we should sleep on it, okay. think about it, and come back. I see somebody with their finger up on the screen. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> didn't hear yes, Councillor, make it quick, please. Oh, absolutely. Uh, just uh, that we're talking about a dimensional variance here, not a use variance. And the standard for dimensional variance is uh, is is lower is a is even a, even a relatively minor hardship can justify a variance so a hardship um if we, the project only needs to become economically impractical not impossible uh because this is dimensional variance that we're seeking not a use variance in addition um betsy i'll jump in if i may okay. am i able to speak um yeah i just wanted to comment that we aren't even the top design, which has been a result of many months of going back and forth with the planning board, um, is not what we, is not our perfect world. Um, it's an agreed upon, uh, nearly agreed upon with the planning board world where they've said, yeah, this makes sense to us. We understand why this is here, why you're saying that there, you know, so just as far from like a pure comparison perspective, it, this it's not our perfect world versus the the worst you know the the worst case world this is the kind of middle ground just for folks that said like oh well 
25% less panels, no big deal. It's probably more like 50% if we got our perfect world scenario versus, you know, worst case. I just want to make that point. Before we um, this, I think Tim Butler might be online. He's been on the with the Kenny, you there? You want to say something? I guess he's Mr. not. Mr. Buckman, are you on Zoom? And he's there. He's there. Yeah, I'm in here. Would you like to comment? Uh, only that the uh, planning board hasn't made a decision yet, so they're uh, still in, still considering the application. Uh, one of the things they had to do, though, was to have this variance uh, approved before they uh, were to finalize their uh, consideration for the current plan it's, that you see there before you. All right. Very good. Thank you. Well, I have to say something, maybe. Maybe I shouldn't, but unfortunately, this applicant paying for a penalty for Faring Hill project because everybody against Faring Hill project, which I agree as well. I went to that board who did that bylaw, and I suggested not to go in R60 or R45 or R30, be on a district such like this one and bogs that would fit this criteria. For some reason, somebody like the R60 and the R45 and which is, I totally disagree against it. I disagree in the industrial park because it's taken our residential land and taken our industrial land. Parcel like this, very hard to be a residential. So this is the perfect <laughs> location for, for panels if you wanna meet halfway. So the, I wanted to say, you get penalized because Ferring Hill project, which is Ferring Hill project is a very bad project. And and the land trust, I believe, some trust wanted to buy this project, and the owner was despiteful, didn't want to sell it to them. And he was, they were giving him full price. I was surprised they were giving him full price. I think, and and I think this project should be denied because he was getting what he wanted from the from the from commit. I don't know what it is, wildland trust, open space, and uh, the guy didn't want to sell it. So this gentleman getting penalized because Ferengel project. But that being said, let's get a motion to continue. Yeah, I'll make that motion. I have a motion to continue till 28. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Troy. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, Denied. abstain. Denied? She, yes. You don't want to continue? She doesn't want to continue. Okay. All right. So but it's so continued. It's continued. All right. We'll see you on the zero. 28. Thank you very much. Thank you. Give us guys a minute for Jonathan's second one. Let's take some notes. All right, let's get back all these plans here. Thank you. Yep. I just wanted to get. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, next continue public hearing 29-22, Joshua Diolim, special Sorry. permit on Cranberry Highway. Good evening, folks. My name is Robert Perry, and I represent the applicant here. Good evening. Your name, sir? Joshua Diolum. Okay, very well. That's, I guess the, the note has been read into record last time, Councillor, right? The, last, the, the original time in, I was down with COVID again this year, second time. Right. And you were kind enough to continue this for me. Thank you. Is that the letter from Mr. Conti? Yes. 
Okay. I think they all should have a chance to have it in their hand. I I don't disagree by any means. I I agree with you. Nice. It's <clears throat> one of these index of exhibits. We saw we missed something. I don't know if it's redundance, Japanese, but I see things with their name on here. Veronica, we can just do this. There's no need for all that. Might as well make sure everybody okay. gets what they're supposed to. So we've got like four different things. Yeah. 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 Make my stack smaller Does anyway. Does have one? I have two. Oh, Troy, I have yours. <laughs> <laughs> it has your name on the front. Ah, okay. You've got sample. We're all good. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's hear it. I guess so. Okay. All right, what all right. And, and before I begin, I do have a couple of additional photographs I'd like to to give to you, if I may. Okay, that's all the same. And I will show me earlier. I'd like pictures. I'll be quiet. Be all off. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one is too. Yeah, two complaints. Thank you. Huh? Can't speak, you'll get yelled at for not speaking into the microphone. Thank you. The photographs are in addition to the photographs that I gave you with the original application. And I give them to you because I want to let you see what my client has been doing to improve the property and to create a buffer. He's looking, he's a young man, in business, very small business, and automotive business. And he's looking for a special permit as required under the bylaw in order to conduct this business at the property he purchased a little, year, a little over a year ago at 2618 Cranberry Highway. He has tow trucks. He does towing on a small scale, two ways, one for customers and one for himself. He, bought, he will buy a vehicle, bring it back, and uh, end up pretty much junking them at a higher price than he bought them for. He, will, he also ends up, like all tow companies, with vehicles that he gets called to tow and they just never get picked up. So, so he's stuck with those also. He has put in a buffer zone. He's only looking for nine vehicles. He needs a special permit in order to properly operate. And he needs, should have a class two license there, even a one vehicle license, simply so that he can sell off vehicles that he no longer has a use for. Uh, I don't think this thing is detrimental to the neighborhood at all. It seems that this, this neighborhood is our Wayham's auto mile. We've got Wayham Ford, we've got Manny D. Miranda Discount Auto, we've got uh, uh, Robertson's. Robertson's. So, I mean, it's it's probably the best place in town to have something like this. And it, you know, it's not hurting anybody other than perhaps Mr. Conti feels he's being hurt by it. Um, you have a, an extensive letter from Mr. Conti. I've looked it over. Some of the things don't even make sense. They don't seem to have anything to do with my client's uh, business or what he wants to do there or what he's able to do there. So I, I think I've kind of spelled it out in the application. I think. Uh, you know, it's getting late. It's past my bedtime, probably past yours too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. But I, I think the application pretty well tells what we're looking for. All right. So how many bays that garage is? The garage is basically two bays, it looks like to me, in an office. This, this garage. And that was on the property when he bought it. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, what are you looking at? We we did give you a picture of of a garage on his property that was there when he bought the property. All right. Okay. So you live in the property and you have a garage and you want to do mechanic and towing or just towing? Wants to do mechanics, but uh, primarily towing. Primarily towing mechanic would just be, you know, on my own tow trucks and vehicles that I buy. I'm not really doing or... primary business is towing yes as, towing. As mr conti points out his father is right next door and has operated for probably 20 years a repair facility next door all right but let me let me iterate again go ahead primary business is towing yes uh towing in a concern on a strip commercial is not allowed it's only allowed in residential and in, uh, industrial. It's not allowed use. You're going to need a variance. They're asking for a special permit. Asking for a special permit. But the towing is only allowed in industrial zone. Well, let me ask you can I amend the petition and we republish? You got to republish it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with republishing. I don't want to refile it because it's it's commercial and it's a lot of money out of the book in the pocket. I understand. I don't have a problem whatsoever with amending the petition and you know, republishing. Me, we I think we publish in a way a week. Can somebody look at the bylaw and just make sure I'm right? Because I'm relying on you. I didn't think so. And I didn't bring my bylaw. We're not looking for junkyard. We're not looking for salvage. It's currently zoned. CS. Yeah. I believe that would be more vehicle service. Say it again, uh, Ken. I, I thought it was myself. I mean, I thought. I believe that it's motor vehicle service, which is a special permit from the zoning board in the commercial strip and the, and the CG, the commercial general district as well. Yes, Ken, I understand. That's why I iterated. He wants primarily towing, not auto repair. So that's why I iterated in a question twice. Auto repair is allowed use, but uh, uh, towing is for the industrial park only. Towing is separately listed in here? Yeah. Uh, motor vehicle service. Well, unfortunately, if motor towing can come with the motor vehicle service. So if you have a garage, you could do towing. Oh. Do you think do you think that uh, perhaps we should be looking for mechanic work in the garage as well as the towing as a side? I mean, I I'd like to get him on an even keel. He's a young man who's working very hard. And uh if okay, I read but let me, all right. I apologize. Say you withdraw your your comment and you go back to a garage. How can you only fit nine cars for towing? Yeah, you can I mean, that's why that's why I'm trying to Okay, okay, okay. I have, I have, I have a repair facility, and I understand. How can you survive with the repair and towing with only nine cars? It just doesn't make sense. How can you only have nine cars? With the pictures already here, you probably have nine cars. Nine every day. Yeah, I move not nine in and out every day. Sir, one last thing. I gotta give you the floor to speak. So when I let you speak, let the council finish. He has to turn this stuff over, and he's able to. He's able to turn it over quickly. 
I believe I will have no problem with it, but you're going to have to come with the site plan reveal. Well, only we can have more than nine. Well, that's why that's you guys put nine, so you get away without the site plan, because I believe it'll be a lot more than nine. So I will personally, that's my opinion, I run it by the board. I would like to see a site plan, especially if there's also a resident on the property. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, the, um, yeah. Ken's trying to say something. One second, Councillor. Yes, Please. Ken. The definition of motor vehicle service is, is includes towing for service. Correct. If it's motor vehicle service, that's why I asked the question twice. However, I'm going to allow the Councillor to withdraw his comment and go to motor vehicle service. Towing is only strictly if it's towing only for the industrial park. But I, I'm, it's okay. I accept the withdrawal. But I believe it should be a site plan. It needs a site plan review. I'm going to pass by Veronica. I'll start asking questions. Veronica, what do you think? I just say one more thing first. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, come. To nine vehicles, then he's in violation if he has more. I mean, he, he is saying, look, number one, yeah, I can't afford a site plan. <laughs> It's ridiculous for what I want to do there on my property. I don't have enough room to do an awful lot more than that. Well, I want to limit myself to nine vehicles, and I have to turn them over in and out quickly in order to make my living. All right. Let me let me hear from the board and the public. We'll okay. go from there. So, Veronica? So, so there's a, a residence on the property? There is. What's the requirement for parking for the residence? I would say at most two cars. Two. Two okay. cars per unit. What is it? I'm sorry, Ken. Two cars, two spaces per unit. And there's one unit on the property. Plus one three bedroom house. That's two okay, parking. So that lot. would be two parking plus two nine parking. for the for the cars. And then, are you going to have any employees? That's eleven right there. That that would trigger a site plan. Well, Congrats. the ones. Is there for the house, nine for the thing would trigger a night site plan. You 11 cars. He's absolutely right. Let me pass by Jim. We'll get back to you. Go ahead. Jimmy. Um, um, the question is What is it that you do? Do you pick up cars? Like, if I wanted my car moved to Florida, would you do it? That's the type of thing you do. Like, are you a car mover or? Like, if I call to AAA, are you going to come pick up my car on the side of the road? You told I could. Good. Good. So you do. So then when you, when you pick that up, where are you going? The car that I'm towing? Yeah. It to, uh, to, the, to the customer's house. So you take it to their house. Yeah. A lot of vehicles never even make it to the, you know, to the shop or the, you know. And, and, and it's, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, what are you really doing there? Because I got a sense you're not like Max, or is it Max towing and Vaughn's towing and this and that and everything. And they're, they're out there looking for disabled vehicles and yanking them back to a yard and filling the yard up with it. I got a sense that what you're doing is picking up vehicles for customers and moving them for customers. I got an unregistered vehicle. I want it moved to the garage. I got a car I want brought to Florida. Is that more what you do? That is that is more what I do, yeah. I don't know about the Florida part. That, that's well, maybe Florida is better. Yeah, yeah. I, I got a guy I want to brought to Fall River or, or Rhode Island or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know that there's guys that did get five car carriers and they load them up and they bring them down because people, well, people he's want got, to fly down and have their type of He doesn't have five car carriers. We're doing you call him up and need a car move, he'll move it anywhere within reason. I mean, that's what he does. Not He's not like Max. Max tied in with AAA, financed by AAA, and, and that's his big business. Richard? So, yeah, I'm sorry. I guess, I guess where we are is we're just stuck on whether we need a site plan review or not. From what I'm hearing, listening to everybody. Okay, very well. Richard? So, I believe like the majority of the people who live in Florida are the same as they have a lot of and they have a I'm sorry about that. I'm a beginner too, Bob. 
<laughs> so I get <laughs> so again, I I believe that the majority of the cars that are towed by AAA, like I I've used AAA quite a bit. They go to my mechanic or somewhere, and if they don't have a mechanic, they will take them to their place. So I guess in my view, everything would be fine unless you had a busy night one night and you had three customers call and needed three cars towed all in one night. Would you tell them? It's got to go to your house, and then it can come to when I make room. I would, what he would have to I would do. definitely find ways would to work have to around do. it. I'm not a 24-hour business, so I wouldn't be yeah, doing work at night. I know, but you're you're you're, uh, one you're like you're, time. One other time. You're, you're you're in business, and if a customer calls, yep. All right, you'd go to help them. So I'm just, I guess I'm just reiterating the fact that it, not everybody takes the car back to the house, but there is he's a mechanic. If they didn't have a mechanic and they needed help, then he could take it to his place. All right. But again, so that would put him over the 11. So site plan review, I think, is right. And let's in go order. back to the subject. Okay. You, you're discussing your business as mainly towing. So as the clerk asked you, so we go back to the same issue. Are you a repair service or you're a towing company? That's the question. I mean, I have skills in all aspects of the automotive field. So, I mean, I can do whatever you're, I'm permitted to do and work yeah. around whatever I need to work around. It's, it's pretty simple for me. All right. Troy, what do you think? No questions at this time. Right. Everybody seems to have gotten. I want to go to the public. But I'm, I'm going to make it clear for you. I'm, I'm, re I'm looking at your pictures right here. You have over 11, 11 vehicles already just in the back. If you're doing a repair shop, you're going to need site plan. If you're doing towing service, you're not allowed to there without a variance. So that's that's the rules of the bylaw. Before we go forward, I'm going to ask the public, anyone want to speak in favor of the project? In favor. Come forward, One please. at a time. One yeah. at a time. Make, sure. make it quick. Microphone, name, address. Thanks for letting me speak, Chairman. My name's Kelsey Fagan. I live at Seven Hill Street, Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. Yeah. I really want to reiterate on the fact that this is a young man with good business ethics who is just trying to make a living for himself and his young family. Um, I've only witnessed Josh have good business practices. My Jeep has broke down many times during the day, and he's been there to help me. Um, I've trust him with my motor vehicle and he has aspirations as well as being um on the wareham tow list i mean he's here to you know help the town out and has been a lifelong wareham uh citizen resident so i really believe that this you know tow company will not be a harm to the his neighbors will not be a harm to the town i mean it's on a commercial strip with another um auto repair shop next door robinson's car dealership and then again it's just you know is, is the town going to be supportive of young people trying to make a, a name for themselves and really carve out their own niche so i think within our town too we have huge players that are kind of in control of this business and josh could make a good impact so that's okay. what i'd like to say i'm I, in favor I, I, of I it i have no doubt he's a great mechanic and a nice guy and everything but special permit or variance as i said before it goes for the property not for the person it's the merit of the property i'm sure he's a great nice guy he seems to be a fine gentleman i'd like to help him but the but there's merits for the project. But thank you for your comment. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I've worked on an assessing department for five years. I understand, but it is a commercial zone. And I believe that um, it's best to rule in his favor. But that's just my. Thank input. you. Thank you. Next one in favor. Hey, Manado, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Manuel Silva. I reside at 26 Osborne Ave, West Wayham, Massachusetts. I'd like to speak in favor of the petition. Uh, I don't see how it could possibly be any detriment to the neighborhood. The property to the right is commercial. The property to the left is commercial. And all around that general area, it's basically auto mechanic related services. So 
you know, that's how I feel about it. And I think he should uh, approve his petition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So who else in favor? How you doing? I'm Antonio Diolum. Just get closer to the microphone so it doesn't yell at us. I'm Antonio Diolum of 2620 Cranberry Highway. Josh is my son, who's my neighbor. I am his abutting neighbor, and I am all for him trying to raise his family in this town like I did for the last 30 years. Raised three kids in this town, and they all live here and pay their taxes like I have, and he's trying to do and raise his family here. And, run a business in the town just like I did because I totally understand I totally understand yeah. thank you for your comment thank you, thank you. Thank you. who else want to speak in favor now I against who favor I still got in favors coming up. favor sir come to William Curtin 59 Parkwood Drive where I am uh just want to reiterate what everybody else is saying. I'm in favor of this project going forward. Thank you, sir. Anyone else in favor? Come forward, please. Hello, <clears throat> Robert LeClaire, 11 on Overlook Terrace. I've been turning wrenches in this town for 35 years, and another mechanic, a good idea. and And so you're in favor of the party. I'm in favor. Thank you, sir. Who else in favor? Okay. Imanatus. Yes, ma'am. Mary oh. Fagan, Seven Hill Street, Buzzards Bay. Um, I'm in favor of supporting Josh Thank in you. the youth of Wareham. Thank yes. you. Yes, sir. Just put that mic next to you. <laughs> How you doing? My name is Glenn Tavares. I live on 713 Ave. Josh is a very, very good kid. My son, Justin, worked with Josh a lot. He helps a lot, a lot of people, and I hope he gets this. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm sure he does help a lot of people. Uh, I, who else want to speak in favor? Hello, Brad Curtin, 59 Parkwood Drive, Wareham. Uh, just reiterating in favor of Josh's business, and I've used him many times, and he's helped me immensely, and I believe he should be able to continue as he's doing, helping the community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, anyone else in favor? That's the whole room. Yes, ma'am. Did his homework. Josh did his homework. Yeah. Janice Rounds, 7 Sandpiper Terrace. Just want to say I'm in favor of Josh opening this business on the same strip that a lot of businesses have done doing Thank the you. same thing. Thank you. Ma'am. Hi, uh, Kiana Fonts, 44 Old Onset Road. Mm -hmm. Just want to say that I'm in favor of Josh's business and no additional comments beyond what anyone else has said. Thank you, ma'am. Stoic. Stephanie Davis, 17 Marks Cove Road. Um, I actually own a repair shop in Halifax, Mass, and I am very familiar with the business that his, his father does work for us. And Josh has towed several vehicles to Halifax, where we, um, and I'm very familiar with the property. Um, he's done immense improvements around that. And I mean, we all know this is the auto mile um, in this section, and I think you should probably give him a fair shake. And I and he turns cows around so fast because he's young, you know. So good luck, Josh. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Who else in favor? Hi, Teresa Fonz, 44 or on the road. And I just think you should give Josh a chance. He does a good job. Thank you, ma'am. Kerry Camp here to 64 Sandwich Road, YMS. I'm all for Josh. I know what it's like to start you know, your own business and stuff. It, it takes a lot. And I, I believe every young man deserves that chance. 
So it's just a, so I believe we should just give him that chance for him and his family. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Bill Youngson. I live at 152 in Enoch Road. As being one of the vendors that Joss has called for for parts, I work at Advanced Auto Parts. It's hard in this business nowadays to get kids that are growing up and going forward with what they're doing. He does show what he's doing to go forward, and I believe he has, like he is. He's trying to support his family further. He's been stand up for me, and I'm in for the petition. Thank, Thank you. you. Well. Uh, who's? Yeah. I think he might have might be setting a record here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My name's Therese Leclaire, Eleven Overlook, East Wareham, and I think it's in a perfect spot for what he wants to do. I don't think it's an issue, and uh, obviously he's got a lot of support in, from the town. And I just, we, we, I, def we definitely think it's in a perfect spot in the right zone but it needs it needs work you can just say okay this is a permit and start throwing cats but thank you for your comment thank you sir who else now against anybody here to speak against opposed? are you for or against okay, please sit down Name and address. Um, Brian Mataki, 5 Hollow Tree Avenue, Wayham. I'm in favor of the towing business. Um, I think it's beneficial to the town, and I think he's doing it the right way. He's actually not trying to hide it from the town. He's going about it the right way, trying to get permitted, try to get started as a small business and just try to grow a business and try to make a dollar the correct way. So I support him. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, who else in favor? Now against, against comfort. Before we go with the against, again, Mr. Uh, Josh, last name, please. Fiol. Fiol. Like I said, we definitely love to help. I mean, I was your age once, I was given a chance, but there's some rules and regs we have to follow at the minimum, the rules and regs. We can't just, just hand it like that. So let's hear it from the Abara. Um, Christopher Conti, 2614, 2616 uh, Cranberry Highway. Can you get a mic closer to you, Chris, please? I'm a director of butter um, on the east side of the property, 360 feet of our properties um, about each other. Uh, I'm not sure if this, it seems like the application uh, it also included that two properties would be using this special permit, 2618 and 2620. I was a little bit confused on how the applicant can only can apply for two pieces of property. Um, so in my letter, I sent a letter to the board. I don't know if you've all read it. Um, I can read it and go through my points if, if you'd like me to. Um, well, I think we need to clear up the first comment. Right. The application for 2620 and 2618 or just 2618? 2618. I, I don't know how Mr. Conti came to that conclusion. If I made a misstatement somewhere, then I apologize. Mm -hmm. I don't think I did. I I saw his letter before I came here tonight. Your property's 2618. Yes, and what's this 2620? That's his father's property. That's a mechanic shop. And that's not part of this application? Of this application. What's no. map 110? You, are you, uh, you're lot 1051. Yeah, they're both on the same map. Okay. So it's definitely 2618. 2618. Okay, because he said he's going to util utilize the permit with 2620 on one of the. Uh, well, I think it says that the application. Would, if, if vehicles needed work, he would probably be towing them to his father's place. Yeah, right. Um, obviously. On this application, it but says. We're not looking for any special permit for the father. Or the right the father. So I was just a little bit curious about that because he does have an automotive business next door and they drive around through both properties. So they seem to be utilizing you know, both of the properties <clears throat> for the business or for that business. So I guess my letter included 2620. I mean, um, 
he, his father has an automotive business there since, as he mentioned, 2007, a long time. He doesn't have a special permit, which he, which he needs one. Who are we talking about? Are we talking about well, Counselor, if you allow him to speak. Then well, speak. but he's not speaking to my client's property. With all oh, okay, respect. I'll speak on that property. There's many violations on that property, um, according to our bylaws. Uh, if we look at our bylaws, 320 principal use, uh, motor vehicle service, a motor vehicle sales. Seems like they're operating a junkyard, a salvage yard. They have an illegal two-family dwelling. Uh, they have storage containers. Um, 351, multiple principal use. That requires a special permit and commercial uh, strip. Junk guards aren't allowed with 500 feet minimum. Um, use is prohibited. Um, destructive of our property values. They, I mean, they're over there vacuuming, pressure washing all the time on vehicles. They're spraying vehicles outside uh, without the proper facilities. They're selling vehicles with leaky tanks, uh, gas tanks. Um, 371, open lot of storage of junk. Uh, 530, ungaraged motor vehicles. I've seen as many as 20 vehicles on the property. Um, they need a variance for their two family. Um, no Title V was done on the property since they bought it. Um, let's see. Do we really need another principal tow yard in our um, town? There's usually that, that's twelve. Irrelevant. There's if, usually twelve to twenty if junk. It, if it meets the criteria, they there's could usually tw twelve to twenty junk and used vehicles. It, this is but, not. A, I comment back. Do we need? You said, do we need another tow company? Right. I know that's it, irrelevant. It is irrelevant. Um. Okay. They have 12 to 20 um, junk vehicles parked in the yard. They had four flatbed tow, tow vehicles. Two of them they removed from the property. Um, he's got his employees uh, parked uh, vehicles and now a multifamily. So I would definitely say this requires Article 15, a site plan review. On um, the safety issues with tow trucks entering in and out um, onto Cranberry Highway. They always seem to drive on the curb. I don't think they're their curbs are, um, they have enough roundness for a to flatbed tow truck plus a tow behind vehicle onto that. Um, I attached some pictures. I don't know if you saw them. There's always stopped in front of my house. Uh, I have people pulling in my driveway. There's tow trucks always on the side there. They're loading uh, vehicles on, that he sells for people there. I think it's unsafe for Cranberry Highway there. There's a safety issue. Um, I don't like the salvage yard business, which I think I showed you a bunch of pictures with that. There's also uh, Facebook marketplace ads saying, you know, tell me what you need. I'll pull it off a vehicle and sell it to you. Um, according to our bylaws, uh, 1461, the Boarding of Appe Board of Appeals shall not approve any application for a special permit unless it's fine that in judgment all of the following conditions are met. One is the use as developed would not adversely affect the neighborhood. This tow business junk salvage yard definitely affects my neighborhood in a ne negative manner. The specific site is appropriate for such use or structures. This is not an appropriate location, but especially with all the surrounding residential homes. Uh, no nuisance or serious hazards to vehicle or pedestrians. As I said, they're going in and out of the Cranberry Highway. There's you know, bound to be an accident sooner or later adequate and appropriate facilities. Um, they're, the building that they have there, I don't even think they can f f uh, pull a car in, into each, uh, each one of those bays, any one of those bays. That's why they're working all outside. It is detrimental to my neighborhood. Definitely make my property's value go down. I, I you know, I, he's probably a great guy and all that. Um, I have no problems with have, him doing something that is allowed in our area. Um, but I would ask the board to deny this special permit. And if you do wish to consider the application, I would definitely like to see a site plan review. Um, and I guess that's that's my point. Thank you. Thank Any, you for your comments. Anyone against? Anybody else opposed that wants to speak? All right. Yeah. You want to comment, Councillor? Well, I mean, I've gone through Mr. Clark's right. pictures. He's got pictures here that don't even make sense they don't seem to apply you've got a picture for example i've got in front of me right now of some tow truck not my client in his driveway if they're turning around and about, i don't know what they're doing so nothing that's, to do with i that. understand that's on irrelevant, on these, these that's irrelevant for the application 
some pickup truck parked out in Cranberry Highway down down the way. Veronica, thank you, Con. What your wishes? Um, I think um, you know, as you had said, you know, site plan review is definitely. Um, the other thing is, uh, Mr. Conti did bring up some points, um, and in the past when um, points are made about um, nonconformity and doing things um, that have that haven't been approved, we do look at that went before approving an application. So those are some things I think that need to be addressed. Um, but other than that, I don't have any comment at this time. Jimmy. I'm thinking I keep hearing the word site plan review. When we say site plan review, <clears throat> are we talking about a full blown um, engineer drawn plan of the property and lighting and landscaping and drainage and uh, curb cuts and the whole nine yards? Previous... Well, what's he got to do to avoid that? I mean, that's, that's a huge cost for a little operation like his. It sounds like as long as I'm under the limit. Get the microphone so it's okay. It sounds like as long as I'm under the limit of vehicles, I'd be okay. But you're not under the limit. But I can be. Yeah, so you got to cut the seven? You I know. mean, that sounds like the only issue. He's working with? That's what I was going to ask you. It's, I mean, I didn't think the two vehicles for the house, registered vehicles, counted in what we're doing on a special permit under, as I read the bylaw. Now, I may have read it wrong, and you know. You're more an expert now than I am. <laughs> All right. We could pull a vote if you wish, but let me finish with the board. Rich. <clears throat> well, I do believe I'm on Veronica's side as far as he making a record on how many people came in for one project. But I did hear everybody saying that he's a great mechanic. I didn't hear anything about towing, towing, towing. So he's here for towing. He's probably a top-notch mechanic. I have not met him. Um, hopefully someday he'll help me out, but all I heard was mechanics. So again, he's here for towing. Sounds like he's going to be doing both. Troy. I agree. Um, it, it, is there any way to enforce the stipulation of how many cars he has there? I mean, how would we enforce something like that other than site plan review? Well, site plan, you're still going to end up with a maximum number of cars, which you could violate. I've got cases in other towns with facilities similar to this. And, and you know, the building inspector stops out uh, monthly at random and, and checks them. Can I make a, uh, I'd like to make a suggestion to you. I, you look at it this way by doing a site plan review, you can add a lot more cars legally. You're trying you you're limiting yourself and where your business can go with this presentation you put before us to try and kind of slide under. If you do it how we're requesting it, this opens up a lot of options for you in in future progress because then you won't be stuck with nine. You could probably put 30 cards in there. I don't need to. I understand. I mean, the whole thing we, we would be better whatever. here with site plan review of these. Yeah, why don't why don't I have the opportunity first to go with the nine, and then we come back next year if it, you know, if I think I need to expand. What? If you want to go that way, we'll pull the vote. If you don't like the answer, if you want to, you want to vote. Yeah. Well, hey. I'd, I'd I'd like to hear what everybody's that, position is. I mean, well, I mean, you I'm going to do whatever the board wants me to do to try to help this kid out. Okay, we'd love to help. Him. I hate to have him spend the money for site plan review. We don't have a minor site plan review anymore. I don't remember the last time we had it. What, twenty five years ago, thirty years ago? So he's got to have a landscape expert, everything. You know, uh, God knows when I can get back. You I mean, see, Churchill you... took forever to do this this plan you've got before you right now. Because he's on a low budget like all of us trying to help this guy out. I totally understand and I hate to say no, but you see how the board's going. So what do you like to what do you want to do? You wanna close it? We close it and vote. No, I don't want to close it and vote. I, I think if, if we're gonna get forced into doing a site plan review, so be it. I'm I'm wanna discuss it with him. Wanna continue, continue it, it, think about it. Until the next meeting and let he and I discuss it and very think well. About it. I, well, there was discussion also about this being uh, posted as a variance. If we go stop. Yeah, I, you know, I. So is that, that I think that needs to be addressed if, before the no, next. No, if so he we, wants to go repair, towing comes with repair, but repair is going to have to go for site plan. 
Val to just towing, you're going to need a variance. So, all right. So if we decide to go the site plan review route, you what have I got to do? I've got to amend my petition. Look for my 30 cats no. that you're suggesting. Yeah. You got to amend your petition and come back with a full okay. blown plan. I do whatever you want. You want me to? No, I understand. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the fact. I think this board wants to help. And but you want to do it within the realm of the, the bylaw. Well, I, I have a question of, of um, both the applicant and our chair. If the uh, application gets amended, it has to be re advertised. I don't have a problem with that. I have no Does problem with re advertising. Isn't there 30 Aren't days? We, didn't I use way him week on this for 100 bucks? I mean, if you go site plan review, just you could just by the time it has to be publicized, you got to publish it in the paper. But by the time he finishes plan, it's plenty of time. Well, what I'm saying is, I can't see us continuing for two weeks. There's no way he's going to be back here in two weeks with what we're saying. Well, I'd like. I'd like to consider the issues. I'd like to talk with John Churchill about it and see what he's going to be able to do to help us. I'm going to advertise like to talk with my it. client. Yeah, I understand. What I'm, what my I'd point... like to report back in two weeks is what I want to do. I, I won't have a... Well, you want to come back in two weeks? Yeah, I want to come back in two well, weeks okay. and tell you what we want to do, I what we'd like gonna... to do. Cool. Okay, very well. Two weeks, very well. Okay. I make a motion that we continue this for two weeks. I have a second. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Propose right. abstain. And, and aye. I, I'm sorry, you didn't vote. I should shut up. We'll see you on the 28th. Okay, maybe Thank you did vote. And if I turn him into a mechanic, then he's fine on his towing and it doesn't need a variance. That's right. All right. Thank you. He just became a mechanic. Thank you, folks. Thank good, you very much. Good night now. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. All right, public hearing 30 22, the family pantry, Damien's Place Corp. Site plan review for 242 Marion Road. Can I have these, uh, whatever we had from that last one back for this folder, please? Oh, man. What's it cost for a site plan review to be? This is the guy that can tell me. What's a site plan review cost? Nine, ten grand, five, seven. Here's one right here. <laughs> Fifteen thousand dollars. That's a big one, though. Five thousand square foot building on two point four two point four eight acre lot. All the requirements that are required. That's that's what that's what the fee was. That's what the charge is. You don't need anything to hand back. To the right. Let's not go into this publicly. Oh, we're not you haven't opened up a hearing yet. You just asked me to jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Asked him and then kick him. <laughs> do, do you request the last Good one answer. at the end of the, the night all the time? <laughs> Things that you always. I was going to ask you that here in that prior You're an empire, but I, didn't, I figured that wasn't fair. Yeah. What's it cost? I didn't know if it was two grand or 20 grand. I just didn't know. Depends, There's no two grand. Definitely. There's nothing two grand. You go. You go to your office. Yeah, exactly. I got my teeth clean. Yeah. No more two grand. I need to, um, I need to excuse me. First, that's just two grand nowadays. Remember, it used to be 300 bucks. By the time you pay the excavator and do evaluate and do the plan, more? More than two. Look at about $3,000. It's all, you know, one of the houses are almost $100,000. Yeah. Tell me what that is, Jim. All the real estate people are buying them up. Uh, let's give give us a quick break They're and then go to the bathroom. <laughs> They're on any. Jim, is he sitting? Yeah, yeah, he just went to the bathroom. I'll move this up here. You work for the town or for TV, sir? Uh, so. Oh, I work for TV, sir. Uh, yeah. I'm 
I am one of the four full time board of regents. Not big number. Yeah. You gotta be down to the records and stuff. Why well, he handed us all we need to see. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I have them built in. I guess when it comes to site plans and everything, it's the price of doing business. You must know that, right, Nas? Yeah. A lot of times, it's, I did one time a site plan in hand, $75,000. I got a no. Six Ooh. months later. Ooh. I, in Yamat, in Hyannis. Wow. Right on, right on 28, they said no, $75,000. Attorneys, engineers, everything. Sometime at Auckland, one time also, spent like 40, said no. That's why 90% of your buildings in Wayham, I guess. <laughs> I've done other places. No, I'm just kidding. Middleborough, I've done Lakeville, I've done the Bedford. But a lot of times you go and they say no. It's the name of the game. Remember when we have minor and major cycling going all the way back, you know, when you had that minor, you were able to get a much smaller project. Right. That makes sense. Presented. Yeah. Yeah. Minor. I mean, it, it's that's gone, thing. I guess. Be given a no. Part of bylaws. Sorry. Well, if you start a minor. It wasn't. It isn't part of bylaw any longer. And nobody obeyed to the rules, and it goes out of hand. That's the problem. I think this one's late. Can't wait till the 28th. What, a long one? We've just shipped all of our <laughs> clients. All right. We just did this whole meet. We're going to do it all over again on the 28th plus whatever else comes in. That's why I wish we could, in some kind of a way, push them along. Sorry, I couldn't wait any longer. Sorry. It's that huge Gatorade you drank. I saw you. It was only a little <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> do we need a folder and everything? Need it all. I think the whole box is his. This is a site plan review. We got the. It's a nice site plan review. <laughs> Jimmy, why don't you give me all this to read in. while you pass? This has to be read in. Yes. And you could pass. So. Let me take all of this, and you take that. All right. Notice of public hearing. The zoning board of appeal will hold. Public hearing on September 14, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. in room 320 of the Wareham Multi-Service Center, 48 Marion Road, Wareham, Mass. 02571 to consider petition number 30-22 for a site plan yeah. review yeah. from the requirement of Article well, 3, right Table 320 <laughs> and Article 15, Section 1520 of the Wareham Zoning oh, Bylaws to the Family Pantry nice. Damien's Place Corp care of GF Engineering of 266 Main Street, Shit. Wayham, Mass, proposing to construct a 50 by 100 building with associated, with associated parking lot, access drives, loading docks, utilities, and stormwater management system located at 242 yep. Marion Road, Wayham, Mass. Yeah, that, Assessor's that. map 56, lot 1000B in the MR30 zoning district. And the notice, first notice was August 25, 2002. Second notice was September 1st, 2022. All right, it's yours. Okay, I'm Bill Madden from GAF Engineering. 
here on behalf of Damien's Food Pantry. Yep. The petition before you tonight is really twofold. One of them is uh, site plan review requirements, and the other one is uh, under, I think it was three, Article 3, Section 320, um, a special permit for a neighborhood grocery store in the in the MR30 um, zoning district. Yep. So those are the two things that we're we're talking about tonight. I think the standard on the uh, on the use special permit not substantially detrimental to the neighborhood um, in that in that area. If you're if you're all familiar with that, there's a get the gas station right across um, Swiss Beach Road. Then there's Morgan's Mobile Home Park down Swiss Beach Road a little further across the street, across from Route Six. At Morgan's. I don't know if it's more. No, I am wrong. It's not Morgan's. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I, the little one. Okay. It's okay. a little one. Yeah. Then across the across Route 6, you have Wareham Country Market, which has been there for a number of years. That's a regular convenience store. Then we go down um, just to the right of that as you're looking at Domino's Pizza, Brown's Package Store. So there's a there's a um, quite a few some well retail uses in that in that general in this that general the area. Front of route six yes it, and it's between cranberry cottage and that gas station at the end of square yep. beach road correct yeah and it's it been is. for sale forever and the chamberlain's own it that's right okay i think i know where it is and nick Deekus is very involved with damien's food pantry i believe he's the 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 um yeah the president of it down here and where him and uh as far as i could see by the deed the the deed conveyed Deacus conveyed the property to Damien's Food Pantry, and they're the owners of the land, and this is where they're looking to uh, to put it. The existing food pantry is down at Cranberry High with the old Ocean Spray building, you know, Peter Ferry's building down in there. They're going to move it out of there when this, when this building is constructed, and they're currently in a fundraising um, mode right now to generate the capital necessary to, to build the building. Um, as you can see on this plan, this indicates the uh, the locus in blue on a USGS quad sheet. This is um, on an on an aerial photograph where it looks what it looks like. You can see that half round circle on the lot. That's due to the cell tower that's on that lot. That that yeah, property. we granted that. We were yep yep. You did. So does, does did Damien buy the property already? Or are they? Yeah. Subject to this approval. No, it's purchased. They own it. The deed and the application. And do they own the land that the tower is on and they're a tenant the tower is a tenant to them now or no, the tower is on a separate owned. property. Oh. Um, but I okay. There's something we can talk about later, I think, on on that thing. But in any event, the in any event, it's um it's 242 Marion Road. It's an MR30 zoning district. Um, the minimum lot area required is 30,000 square feet. There's 108,000 on the lot. Um, frontage is required to be 100 and 150 feet. We have around, um, I don't know how many we have. We have a lot, <laughs> much, much more than that. We're able to meet all of our setbacks. We're proposing um, municipal water. There's municipal water out on, out on, um, Route six and on Swiss Beach Road, we desire to take it from Swiss Beach Road. Uh, the property has a sewer easement across its frontage, like a twenty-foot wide sewer easement. There's a line that runs through there, so consequently, we're also looking to tie into uh, municipal sewer on Swiss Beach Road. And I'll get to those areas on the plan when we when I when I flip through the sheets, but uh, that's. That's what the deal is pretty much for for the utilities, how we're planning to how we're planning to deal with it. I think that with that sewer easement on Route 6 right in the front kind of restricts our ability um, landscape wise. You know, we're not able to really plant trees in that thing. It is an easement. So we had to do a couple of a um, couple of things with landscaping. We still provide the landscaping that's required by the zoning bylaw. The parking requirement for a building such as this, it's one per 300 square feet. That would mean we need 17 spaces. We've provided 33 on the site and I'll explain why we why we are providing 33 on the- Mr. Uh, Madden, if I, do you have the commissioner deny or like 
denial recommendation letter. I don't have it on the file. Did he deny you or he just sent you? Well, he sent you to here, but do you have that letter somewhere? I can't find it. No, I don't have a I don't have a letter from the I building commissioner the package, in, in the package. package. Yeah. You just came straight to us before going without you know, going to him? We talked I was I had I had previous discussions with the prior building commissioner. commissioner. Yeah, and we talked about how we were gonna go forward with it. He thought initially that it was just allowed by right, but that was not the case. It is a special permit. It is special, uh, it permit. Is special permit under under that. So, you know, we had advanced the entire permit application and put it forward, you know, pr prior to that. But you know, I think that just reading the bylaw, you know, I didn't really, I didn't think that I needed him to do that. But he it, is the a commissioner. He's the one who enforced zoning. Dave Requina. Well, Mr. The, the, Mr. the new, the new uh, Paul Turner is Paul now Paul the Turner. Yeah. He's the one who directs us what to do. But he was not he was not here when we started this. We started with Dave. Then, you know, things just Okay, we we I'll allow to continue it, but out of respect, I think you should go see him. I will. All right. I'll I'll take care of that. Okay. Um so in any event, that's what the uh what the pride where the pride where the project is globally, like from ten thousand feet up. The second sheet in, in those plan set that indicates basically our general notes, our storm water, our water, um, erosion control, legend general notes in the test pit data. We excavated test pits on the site for uh, for our stormwater management system. We needed to make sure that we had proper separation between the water table and understanding of the soils. Did you do a 53G yet? Did they do a 53G? Um, I believe they, I believe they did because we received an estimate from, from Charlie. I had the W9. I contacted okay. the client. I believe it's all in place. I'd have to double check with Ken. All right. Okay. We haven't heard anything from him yet on that. From Charlie. From Charlie, no, no, okay. not yet. I'm sure we will. Go ahead. Continue. Okay. Um, the sheet three, that's a, that's a site overview plan. That just basically shows us what we're doing here. Here's our frontage on Marion Road. We're about 220 feet, our driveway entrance, 24 feet wide, mass highway, curb cut is what we're going to, to need there. We're about 220 feet away from um, Brown Street, about 260 from Swiss Beach Road. And then the, the back driveway is about 350 feet from, from Route 6. So there's a requirement of the zoning that the driveways have cannot be closer than 150 feet. Um, from intersecting streets and what have you. So, you know, we that's how we cited the driveway entrance so that we we're compliant with, with that. How far are you from Brown? 220 to the center line. I think the requirement's 200, but doesn't matter. Yeah, it's 220. If it's whatever it is, it's 220. Not 150. You said 150, but I think it's 200. Yeah. But anyway. But that was the first thing I checked into when we did it because there was a member of the planning board that was questioning the distances between the driveway and the roadway, right. Brown Street. And I knew that we had complied. So I, that's how I pointed out. Um, we're showing community gardens as a, as a future amenity for the piece of, for the property. So the thought is, is that perhaps some of the volunteers, the people that are associated with the food pantry might want to establish some, some community gardens over there. It wasn't discussed whether or not some of that product would be brought inside to the building as fresh produce or whatever, but they just thought that that was it. Oh, so that's nice... not parking. That's, those are garden plots. Those are raised bed planting beds just for community garden. So something you might see in the city of Boston, you know, or right. whatever. That's the that's the scale of it. We show a chain link. We show a fence around, a little driveway access, and just twelve feet to drive down. If somebody had a pickup truck and they wanted to, you know, bring their weeding equipment, a cooler for lunch, whatever the case might be. So, so in any event, we come in off of uh, Route Six with the twenty-four foot wide driveway entrance we have a parking field in the in the front of the building it's landscaped perimeter landscaped around it there's some little bit of landscaping up front five foot wide sidewalk 10 foot wide covered porch on the front of the building um the door entrance way you can just see there's a couple of swinging doors that we show here so the entrance is going to be here and the circulation inside the facility is 
is something that they handle. And I don't truly understand it, but I think for some people, you know, they can actually place their order, tell them what they want. And they prepare a box for them, bring it out to the car if you're an elderly person or maybe have, a, have some impairment that doesn't allow you to carry things. But that's what kind of goes on over here. We show um, three, well, two handicapped parking spaces. That's what we're required to have over under 50 spots. Um, on the, uh, let's call it the west side of the building, we show four other parking spaces and there's a double door that's cross hatched in the front of that. And that's just to provide some access inside the building. It's not to drive in, it's not an overhead garage door. It's just a double door with a basically a flush parking stall. So if somebody had a two wheel hand cart, you're bringing something into the door, you're able to get into the building. Circling around the back of the building, we increased the width of the driveway going out to Swift Beach. Um, to 30 feet because we anticipate tractor trailer truck that comes from the Boston Food Pantry once a week will enter in off of Marion Road. We can drive down here um, on the access drive and then back up to these dock level or type loading docks at the at the rear of the building. Do you, have, just... you have room for that? Yes. And still have exit in case of emergency? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We, we we use like a, a WB53, I think, is the uh, the vehicle that we use. But that guy would be down in here and it would still provide access through there. Fire department access is on the very last sheet. Yeah. We show the access is coming in off of, off of Route 6, yeah. going in the front of the parking lot, and circulating in that manner, avoiding that, that loading dock. But that's the plan that we submitted to. Um, Did you get their blessing yet? I haven't received I haven't received a letter from any town board as of yet. Okay. I asked Ken about that today. He had none to provide me. No. Okay. So a couple of stormwater management systems. We have a, a sediment four bay and a small drainage basin in the front to take care of this side of the building. We have another one at the at the rear of the building that's essentially taking the back side. Same general concept, a sediment bore bay plus a small a small drainage basin. So, but that's the overview plan. And this cutout here indicates where we're going to be picking up our water in our in our sewer. Um, the site is a relatively flat site, all wooded as it is um, right now. We show the easement, sewer department easement, property lines, the area the location of the test pits that we dug and some other information uh, with respect to benchmarks and what have you. Ground slopes from this corner down to the down to the back side of the site, a couple of feet of slope. It's a pretty nice site, reasonably level. I think that we're able to build a halfway decent building on the site without um, too many, too many issues. And you can see that's the radius of the adjacent lot that's equal to the fall down zone of the of the cell tower. This is our layout and utility plan. This shows all the dimensions associated with the driveway, the radiuses and what have you, and the number of parking spaces. The circle in the parking space indicates the number in that in that small parking field. Um, the sidewalk, the covered porch sidewalk over there. It's, Pretty, it's a, I think it's a pretty nice um, layout. In the back, we show six parking spaces. We anticipate those spaces to probably be the ones that are gonna be used by the people that work there. Right now, they only operate two days a week between 8.30 and 11.30 a.m. So it's a, it's a relatively early morning um, type of business that they deal, down, deal with down there with their customers. They have a food truck that comes from Boston Food Bank once a week, and they have their own food pantry trucks that go to area supermarkets. I think they have two. They run three to four days a week, and they have somewhere in the order of six to 10 people, volunteers that might work in the place on those off hours, those off days that they're not open. So, so we show our gas, our water, our sewer. We show a pretty wide trench patch. I mean, Dave Requina likes, uh, not Dave Requina, but uh, Dave Bernard uh, likes a wider trench patch. So instead of having individual trench passes, we're going for like a 40 foot wide double, 40 foot wide trench patch. I think we show 
um, flow of a fill is what we're going to use as opposed to gravel in here. This is grading and drain drainage. We're at such a flat site, we're trying to sheet flow as much of the site as we can to each one of these sediment floor bays. We're, um, we're just using paved waterways off the parking lot into the sediment floor bay. Then there's an overflow stone spillway that deposits the uh, the runoff into the into the drainage basin. Those are really infiltration basins. So the water, after it's pre-treated, going through the sediment floor bay, it'll be um, discharged into the into the drainage basin, and it will infiltrate into the ground. And we designed them both the same. The contributing area here for basin two is a little bigger than for basin one. Consequently, it's a little larger. Um, what else we got? This is the sedimentation erosion control plan. We're required to add these sedimentation erosion control plans on sites that will alter more than one acre of land. This is gonna alter one, over one acre of land. So we're required to prepare a sediment, an erosion control plan to be compliant with that MS4 stormwater management requirement EPA laid on the town. So this is why we include this plan. So all of our construction equipment is gonna enter and exit through this construction entrance on Swiss Beach Road. So we'll try to keep most of our construction equipment off of Cranberry, off of Cranberry Highway or Route 6 in this case. Adding Road, yeah. Yeah, Marion Road. Um, so that's what's going on there. We show our erosion control on the site. This black line is just the, is the limit of work line. This detail in the corner shows what that tracking pad, as it's called, when the truck equipment, when the equipment comes in and out of the site. They ha it has to track across that tracking pad so we don't carry a bunch of uh, sediment up the road. The next sheet is the landscaping plan. You can see that we've added some landscaping around the entrances and the throats going into the site. There's some perimeter landscaping at the building. The islands are landscaped a little bit, and then we have more perimeter landscaping up in here, and a little around where the- uh, Stamping those plans. Ed Fuller stamped those plans. Right. Uh, I don't think it's, that copy is not stamped, but yeah. but Ed Fuller's a landscape architect, uh, yeah. does our <laughs> landscape work. I have a stamp plan. Plant list is over here on the uh, left-hand side of the sheet, and it gives the size, the quantity, description. Uh, coming in, what's the radius of the curb? This right here? Yeah. 30. Coming in 30? 30. 30. Yep. We might need 50 for a tractor trailer. Um, and yeah, well. If, if uh, you're coming from Marion. If we're coming from Marion, right. You're going to have to go to the state, right? Yes. I think they're going to, I think you should do 50. If you get tractor trailers, we need 50. Leaving 30 is fine, but coming in. Well, it's difficult with Mass Highway because they'll tell us what they want it to be. I think they'll ask for 50. But yeah. anyway. Well, I don't know. We've, they're going to enter on Swiss Beach. Pardon me? I thought everything they're going to exit on Swiss Beach. They're going to enter. I am going to enter. Construction. Yeah. Which would oh. be the track and trailers, right? Well, we're talking Once about coming from Marion. You know, they would be on, on this lane and they'd have to turn here. So I think the concern was this right hand turn. Left hand turn. Once they're open. Oh. Once they're open, it's open, they're going to be getting food delivered. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I got it. I, I, I... You knew what I meant. Got it. <laughs> um, in the remaining sheets, let's see, where's, I think sheet number 12 is the, uh, the one that shows, sheet number 12 shows the fire department apparatus turning movements. So we show them coming in off of Marion Road coming across the front, turning, turning, and exiting out and looping in that direction. But I'll make sure that I get a, well, we'll have to get the letter from the right. fire chief at some point. Right. On that. Um, the building, there's, so there's a rendering of what the building is gonna look at. It is gonna be um, essentially a metal building. Um, but we're trying to add a few features like the awning type covered porch on the front. There'll be some 
don't know if those would be opaque or whether they're going to be clear panels at that higher level to let some light into the building. I think it's, I think it's going to be um, pretty good. And then it shows the uh, shows the shows the light uh, the windows on the uh, on the side and on the front. I think it's going to be a half, a half wall of say texture, whether it's masonry or simulated masonry or something, and then go back up with the same features of the building. We're gonna want accurate architectural plans. So we're gonna, so if they're gonna put windows, we're yep. gonna, I wanna see windows after. Sure. And the, um, so Dennis, whatever they provide, they're gonna do. No, that's what the goal is because we're pricing out the building, you know, to a contractor. So we need right, to know that. In other words, if they come back, we don't want to see a building. I personally don't want to see a building without the windows after that. You presented us with windows. Understood. Or like the masonry in the front. So, yeah. you know, so I personally, I would. As per plan. Exactly. My back is killing me. Just sorry about that. So make sure you pass the message. Yeah, I mean, there is an architect involved. Uh, Dennis C Caldwell is the architect. Uh, all the construction has to be conducted under control construction. So our plumbers, mechanical, electricians, but, architects, they all have to sign the affidavits for the work. So, But we will have an architectural plan eventually, right? Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that... Um, I don't know. This this lays out site plan review. That's supposed to be what we're reviewing, or we're going to have and architecture. But and then afterwards, we look at that. But I think he's supposed to bring it along. You know, giving us this much, so Charlie can start reviewing. Exactly. Oh, I guess so. this is like the beginning. Yeah. And then. Yeah, I mean, we we plan on that's what the plan is. So it's not coming as any surprise to us. Um, as far as that goes, uh, the the hours of operation, as it's, as I spoke, of, are going to be eight thirty to eleven thirty on Thursdays and Saturdays. They might entertain like a Tuesday if demand is such that requires a little bit a little bit more time. So those are the those are the days that will be open to the public. Then um, on service days, they'll have, like I say, 10, 10 12 volunteers working, um, you know, on the site, but only one or three will work on a non-service day. So we're not, if they're not helping people, there's one to three that might be there on, on any day other than the service days, which are what, the Tuesday, what did I say, Thursday and Saturday. Um, we show 33 parking spaces to handicap. We show no, we show no site lighting. We have no exterior poles on bases shown. We've shown some conduit for future, but right now we think that wall pack units on the building under canopy lighting at the front porch on the front will provide enough security for, for that building. And then in the future, if they if they have nighttime hours, they'll need them. Right now, they're not going to be open in the dark. No, I mean we don't have the winter. Uh, we don't have the winter the site season. Plan to... requires it. Pardon me. Site plan requires perimeter lighting on the building and the parking lot. Mm, I don't know about See what Charlie says. Yeah, no, that's fine. You know. I think that what we're just doing is looking at things that are cost elements that are fairly expensive. If we didn't have to put them there, we could accommodate the, the, the people at the building with the lighting there. That's what we were intending to do. We did show the underground conduits on the site plan so that where our light bases would be installed. So we know where they would go. But however Charlie reviews it and comes up, it was fine by us. Um, but in any event, we have 33 parking spaces and two handicap, which is a little bit more than um, what would be required. It's actually twice as much. But that's we, unheard to have more parking. Now, and in a situation like this, you might get an influxes, and you know, with, if I get the right sense of Damien's pantry, they're giving out boxes of food, yeah. and it's available at nine o'clock on Tuesday. At nine o'clock on Tuesday. 40 cars show up. Exactly. And 905, 40 cars are leaving. Yep. And so and that's it. But you need the parking when the when you get, yep. get hit. 
you see them, they park all the way down alongside the railroad track. Yeah, there. so they Crazy get what they're there. doing here. And yeah. I think when they have more exposure, they're going to probably have more, uh, more, more, people, traffic. more people coming for a box. So food. 33 cars, good idea. Yeah, and that's what we think, too. We think that um, it'll probably gain a little momentum when it, once it gets built. And, you know, it's probably a little better location to be at for the people that have to go, that are planning on going there than where it is. I haven't been to it, but the description is doesn't make me run down there to check it out. Yeah, it's it's accessible, but it's not. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's very that's ten a hundred times better than what they got right now. Yeah, I think it'll be. I think it'll work out really well myself. Um, as I said before, we don't have to sprinkle the building, so we're just putting in a regular, I think a two inch water service is what we're gonna put there. I think we show something, some irrigation for the um, for the community garden, if it, if it comes to fruition. Um, sanitary sewers I talked about, I did talk with Guy Campino, we do understand there's that sewer moratorium. He, you know, he's he was looking for some flow for us to, to be allocated for for this building, it's only 500 gallons a day. It's not a big demand, so we're hopeful. He was on vacation for two weeks, and I haven't heard back. So from. I have a question: the, the the gardens, they're not a they're not a absolute. That could be you could come back in the future and say we're going to pave it and make a parking lot out of it. They come 80 at a time. Yeah, yeah I suppose. I mean, and I'm just I'm I know that's a crazy state, but you, yeah, I don't think it's going to. I don't think it would need to be a parking lot based upon the way we the way we have things right now. You know, drainage would be tough to deal with. There'd be a lot of issues, but I think okay. that I think the desire is really to have community gardens. I think it'd be it might be a nice touch. I, I don't know. I don't we, we don't have any community gardens anywhere in town, do we? No, Cajon at Road. Other than all the medians, uh, uh, dangerous. It's not on the right hand side by the <laughs> steam bat by the steam. Yeah. Yeah. That's um Past the steam bath that we're making. It's, right, it's right, right next to the steam bath. Like the, the yeah, as you come into the steam bath heading from the cemetery, Mount Cemetery, just before there's a parking lot and then there's trees and then in the back, I think there's gardens back there. Oh, really? Something. Okay. I've never been behind there. So, like, so then while we're on the garden, so if the, it's only $500, uh, 500 gallons a day, if they're watering, how much would that would, would increase your waterfall? Depending that, on what they're growing, but it would but, increase but it. But it wouldn't increase the uh, sewage because that would just be going in the ground, right? Correct, but it would be metered water, so we'd be paying the sewer rate. So if it's metered water, you pay for the you you pay for it through the sewer, unless you can document that that water was used for a, a, that that water didn't find its way into the sewer system. So if they were to put a little meter out here and meter that flow and deduct it from the others, that that's one way around that. It's too bad. I, I, um, it's too bad we couldn't have a catch basin and. Be green and keep that water and use it for water. And right. <laughs> our, our sewer isn't needed now, is it? No, no. I was talking about the water. I mean, that's how the sewer you come in. And you pay for it to go out. No, you only pay for it to come in. Oh. You know, the paying to going out is EDUs equivalent. You pay a flat rate when you use. I don't have sewer, so I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. The, you pay a flat rate for a dwelling. Rate. I thought with those because yeah, it's easy to use. And, you know, I mean, I'm not a big fan of. You're not going to have a lot. I get that. that 500 gallons a day is, yeah, it's four bedrooms. Well, yeah, right. Well, the 500 is for the facility, not irrigation water. That's if who knows. Might family. put a well in, yeah, right? Yeah. They could do that as well. Um, not expecting a tremendous amount of traffic there. I think the traffic is going to be really, you know, it's going to be heaviest on the work days, the the two days a week that it's open. So we weren't anticipating like 100 vehicle trips. It's not going to be like a Dunkin' Donuts. It's not going to be like a Wareham Country Market. It's not going to be like a package store. We're just going to very, very benign traffic on this site. At least that's how that's how we're viewing it. The way things are going in the price of food, we might all be in that line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, there's no wetlands on the site. There's no surface waters on the site. There's no rare and endangered species on the site. You know, they talk about, you know, they had a little bit of a discussion about wildlife. I mean, I just find that it really just, it, you know, they're pretty smart. They just relocate to other, relocate to other areas. I mean, we will be altering a good portion of two acres. 
know, there is a there there are some woodland areas um, down Swiss Beach Road. There's a couple. I don't think place. I don't think that holds too much for wildlife in that corner. Uh, nice, squirrels there's squirrels nice and some strings around there. <laughs> So if the guy can't find 500 gallons a day for you, anything stopping you from putting an on-site septic? Yeah, that's basically a game changer to the to the project where it probably doesn't go. Really? Yeah, yeah. Why? Why? Because it would be that expensive. Cost? Yeah, yeah. Geez, a six by eight cesspool doesn't cost that much, does it? I just put a pipe in a catch basin, but <laughs> fifty-five gallon drum with some stones in it, you know? Yeah, if you could do it, I mean, the old school way. I mean, it would it would work maybe up in Maine somewhere or something, but I don't know. We kind of we have... so they got they need the sewer. They need the we do we do need the sewer, and it's and it's the best um, alternative. You know, we show a drop oh, in. Yeah, I get that part of it, but. I just didn't. I think they I think they find it. I think they work I think they're working hard to come up with 500 gallons. I know there's a couple of jobs that we've worked on that that haven't met the prior demand. So we know there's a few gallons floating around somewhere, but how it gets allocated, I don't know who's in line. But 500 gallons nothing. Like no, I said, it's a four bedroom house. Yeah, no, it's not it's it's not much at all. So okay, I guess I know I'm tired. I'm sure everybody's tired. Just a quick question. Go ahead. The dotted line that runs all the way up and it kind of goes in the middle of Route 6 and then comes all the way back around and I see shaded Zone X and Zone X. Yeah, those, that's are, your, the that's flood, the flood those zone? are the flood zones. So we're all in like the 100 year and the 500 year flood okay. zone. No, I was just curious because it's yep. just the way it goes out into the road. And then from the center of Route 6 to the park and right, there's a certain number that you're supposed to have. From the center of Route Six, it's just that I've run into it uh, with another business down there. They made them move all their parking lot because from the center of Route Six to your parking area has to be a certain amount. So I I didn't know if you knew offhand what it was, but I just know that there's a guy that's in that neighborhood. Somehow he works for the state and he has cahoots with the state. And boy, they come down in a heartbeat when he calls. So I just. Just to let you know, over and what's the setback there? All I Twenty know or thirty? The front yard setback. I'm, I'm just looking at the parking lot. Twenty. Ones. Twenty. Twenty. So I'm just <laughs> just curious because that guy, just from my knowledge, he he called them down. They came out. They measured from the center of Route Six and said all the parking lots have to move. So I just didn't know. I didn't want you. To, I mean, I thought maybe you might know offhand. Well, I think that you maybe some of the things you could be referring to is like you see some parking lots that are in actually in the layout of Route Six, um, in the layout of Marion Road, and that's when a guy might measure from the center line and pull his tape. So you got to move these cars back. I mean, ours is designed the way it is, so you know I think that we're you know like Cranberry Cottage. I yeah, that's you the parking out on the out on right. the highway layout. Yeah. Well, not, not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, is that the guy? <laughs> well, that, I mean, I was going to say way. that. Put it this way. I know the guy that moved all of it. So. Oh, there you go. And there's another one down in Marion on Route 6 that, that, you know, they've been parking in the layout there forever. Now that's going to come to a screeching halt. Is that the parking? I'm not working on that job. I just know a little about it. <laughs> but <laughs> our parking lot is... station along the way there that's not doing it. So. Our parking lot is 18 feet from the layout line. So we... 18 feet from the layout, the layout line. Back, right. So they can't be saying move those curb stops. Feet, you need 20. No frontage for the building, not for the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Nice. We'll see what Charlie says. I'm tired. So <laughs> this is the deal. We throw it on Charlie and say we're tired. I mean, I, if some, um, everybody stop me if they want to. So 53G account, make sure Charlie's comment, fire department, sewer. I'm sure you find sewer landscape and architect. You got a stamp, uh, uh, architecture plans. And what else? Think with me, guys. I think you, you said can... the lighting. Well... The lighting. Well, we'll see. We'll hear from Charlie. Lighting is a good question. And also, I recommend don't restrict yourself with the operation hours. Make it eight to five. 
because they could get busy. Well, I think it, we'll. I it think could we'll get super busy. I, mean. I think we'll ask for that, but we just wanted to tell you that this is how the right. How but it then you have to now. come back for modification. Just just do regular hours, if you want, if they want. No, that's a good point. Yeah, that's I mean, good. this way you don't have to come back. That's a little bit of aggravation, and, right? And us some more time. <laughs> you, do, you taking this home? No. All yours. Remember the elastics for these, Jim? Uh, what else? Anything you want to add, Troy, Rich, nope. for them it's to come project. back? I think so. I think, so. so. I think myself. I like it too. Okay, you want to add anything for them to bring next time? Jamie's no? pantry comes a long way if they get that. Jimmy, you want to add something before we send them away? I make a motion to continue. Okay, we have Half a motion. We can do. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Troy. All in favor say aye until the 28th. Aye. Aye. Oppose abstainia. Next hearing on the 28th. Okay. Uh, try to push everybody. Maybe you could wrap it up next time. Yeah, I'll, I'll push it. If it doesn't look like the push is working, I'll just bump it out, tell you in advance so we yeah. don't. Yeah, just. So what, that, what else were you saying? Uh, you, you rattle. Architecture plans. Yeah, got it. Uh, Charlie's comments. I'm sure he'll come back with the comments fairly soon. Hours of operation, uh, landscape and architect, uh, lighting. Like I said, Charlie, what else? Sewer. I'm sure guy would find 500 gallons for a good cause. Then the review where you said something about the driveway entrance. Yeah. And uh, the commissioner. I like you to visit the oh, commissioner. The commissioner. You don't say. Are you saying something? Okay. Just make sure this is what we, we'll, because keep in mind, uh, if we grant you a permit and he finds an announce, he doesn't have to give you a building permit. I'm sorry? Yeah. Jimmy, if, if, he, if the relief you're asking for and you go see him after we grant you and he comes up with something else, he doesn't have to give you a permit. So just go see him, make sure you're on the same page. Yeah, get off from the proper key, even key. Right. If he if you need the relief from the different article, he's gonna you're gonna have to include it so he doesn't turn you down after you do all that work. Okay. All right. Very well. Anything else, you guys, before we adjourn? Well, I heard a second. I didn't know it was closed. I, didn't close. I okay. thought we seconded it. And then it's second. Second. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Go aye. 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 Oppose. Abstain. What we didn't do, I don't think. Yeah. I thought we were done. Thank you, Bob. I'm Bill.